the objectives, but sometimes they just push games a little bit too late into the late game and don't have that aggressive early play. One thing that is worth pointing out is in Ace Gaming's top three heroes right there, we have Samuel. One of the only teams that is willing to pull that out. We've seen so little of Samuel across the course of the tournament. For that to be a top three pick for this team means that they definitely see strength in this hero that other teams maybe don't agree with. I mean, honestly, it, we've seen very little CP ranged heroes coming out of the jungle. Not only the Samuel, but also the Lorelei that I keep on mentioning. Two heroes that are CP and ranged in the jungle. So as I mentioned, Ace is definitely not afraid of pulling out things that other teams have not so far on this world stage. Absolutely. Well, we do have someone in the crowd that wants to give us a little bit of a prediction coming on into this game. I'm going to pass it over once again to Dan Gaskin for our Coca-Cola predictions. Thank you very much, Joe Funny. I'm here with Munchables. Feel free to take your headset off so I can hear you. I mean, we have these Coca-Cola pre-match predictions and we, we hear from the analysts, we hear from the crowd, but we never hear from the host himself, do we? That's we never hear from you. So, I want to know what your predictions is in this next coming match. Well, it's definitely going to be an interesting match. There's, in my opinion, there is a favorite in this one. But I have always been a fan of the underdog, Dan. I've always been a fan of the team that has the mountain to climb, and that's Pain Gaming. I'm going to be repping them 100% from the crowd here. I'm going to be cheering my heart out. There you go, Munchables. He's going to be cheering his heart out. He gets a Coca-Cola for himself. Thank you for joining me, Munchables. I'm going to throw this one back over to Munchables. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah, so uh, I've got my very own bottle of Coca-Cola. This is unfair. We make predictions all day and we don't get a bottle of Coca-Cola. <laughs> That's because it's, it's not about the quantity of predictions, Tasty Bacon. It is about the quality of predictions. So, talking about this matchup then, I do want to highlight one player in particular. Our player to watch coming on into this series is going to be Creation from Ace Gaming. This guy is exceptionally good. We've seen Kestrel stepping on into the games. We've seen a little bit of weapon power Kestrel. Was nerfed coming into this update, but still seen it nonetheless. And Creation has to be one of the best Kestrels in the entire world. We are on into the draft though. Blackfeather gonna be the starting band coming out from Pain Gaming. On the other side, we have Lyra banned by Ace. Yeah, that opens up Churnwalker for Game Pain Gaming to take up and they can play Churnwalker with a Vox and a Koshka, but instead they're gonna go with the Arden and hand over that Churnwalker who has a higher win rate than an Arden over to Ace Gaming. And that's really, really interesting. Yeah, definitely a curious decision <laughs> to be made to be sure. I mean, this Churnwalker has just been so powerful and Pain Gaming, it was one of their most played heroes. They know how strong this Churnwalker pick is, but they are still willing to let Ace Gaming have it. Yeah, I mean, with the Baron ban coming out for Ace Gaming there, that also tells me they want to go for the Vox if it's going to be left open. Either the Vox or something else, such as the Rona, that can play very well with the Churnwalker. We've seen Kestrel oh, with Churnwalker a lot, too. So yeah, Kestrel, Kestrel could, gets taken yeah, off right yeah. away. So uh, Ace Gaming really forced Pain Gaming's hand right there. If they had not banned the Vox, it would have been picked up. The Vox gets banned, the Kestrel comes out, and yep. this is a composition they can siege a turret after another with very easily. Yeah, what Pain should do here is pick Ke uh, Celeste because the range on Celeste is going to be a good counter, especially against a weapon Kestrel. As long as you keep your distance, Celeste will win that poke game, especially in the late game. So let's see if they all will pick up that Celeste and kind of learn from the other Southeast Asia team that just played on stage. I wouldn't mind seeing them go for other things that are very bruiser heavy as well. You know, something that can body block those glimmer shots as they come out. Just stand in front of your turret and block those shots so that your turret doesn't get melted quite as quickly because we know Ace Gaming is going to be wanting to siege up those turrets as much as possible with the Kestrel pick. But uh, yeah, Pain Gaming definitely going to be in a bit of a pickle here yeah. as they try and figure out how to deal with this. Yeah, what's very difficult here is they have to make a choice of either going for a composition that can dive onto the Kestrel later on in the game or a composition that can hold the siege uh, that comes out in the early game. So if they go for Rona, they will have a very good composition later on with the Arden Gauntlets. You just get on top of the Kestrel, try to eliminate her. But if you have the Rona, then your oh. early game phase in the lane is very weak and you would lose turrets. So they're going to go with the Adagio. I'm expecting this one to be either weapon. Honestly, it can be either weapon power or OCP, they still have the choice to make that. The one thing I could see the Adagio doing here against the Kestrel is if you're buying minion candies and constantly healing up your minions, you just continue to keep your minions alive and pushing and prevent Ace Gaming from being able to just siege up nonstop. 
That's one of the things that Daggio can do that no one else can, is provide a little bit of extra health to a minion just to try and disrupt the flow of CSing on the opposing side. Yeah, I hope Pain Game picks up Samuel here, because if they don't, they're going to Wow, that's a very body blocking. interesting composition. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a lot of body blocking to keep the Daggio alive. This does open up Samuel for Ace Gaming, but you have two pretty techy front lines there, a Finn and a Arden that can block the Malice and Verdicts here. But Tasa is just so amazing on that Samuel. And with Kestro, that's a heavy, heavy siege and poke composition that they can run and that, that they're so comfortable with. One of the uh, scary things as well is there's a Churnwalker there on that side. So if they get like Samuel that already does cleave damage as well as that damage being shared by Churnwalker with the Glimmer shots being shared, that could be a lot of AOE coming I up. I mean, the thing is Finn is actually a great pick into the Churnwalker because he can't move him around. He's, he has <laughs> immunity to CC, so the Trespass is useless to an extent as well as the B ability coming oh, out from Churnwalker. Oh, Rona comes out. So it looks like it's going to be a Weapon Rona and a CP Kestro in lane potentially here. I mean, CP Kestro in jungle. Yeah, the thing about the Rona into the Finn Finn is not very mobile. Finn cannot move around very much. Rona can just sit there and stack up on the Finn. As long as she avoids the quibbles and doesn't get stunned, it could be a very, very scary Rona that Ace Gaming are bringing to the table. But this composition from Pain Gaming, I love the fact that they <laughs> are willing to go off meta and bring something unconventional to the table. Yeah, I mean, as a team, they know that going up against Ace Gaming, they're realistic with themselves. They know that Ace Gaming are the favorites coming into it. So they're saying we have to pull off something that no one else has seen in this tournament to try and surprise them and take wins and perhaps even the series. All right, yeah. well, gentlemen, it's that time once again. Predictions coming on through. Sweet Jay, we'll start with you. Which team is going to take this? I mean, Creation is on Kestro, so I got to give it to <laughs> Ace Gaming because of that. My heart says pain because this composition <laughs> is... Two years ago, this was my favorite composition in all of Vainglory, but I do think Ace Gaming is going to be able to take this. Yeah, Team I'll have to say Ace Gaming, just a much uh, stronger team coming out of East Asia. All right, all three of my analysts are predicting the TSM Slayers to take this one out. They managed to win out the group of death. Can they continue on to the semifinals, or is Pain Gaming going to fight this one out? It's time to find out as we pass it up to our casters for quarterfinal number three. Thank you very much, Munch. I am Medic, and I'm joined here by Denomine for this third series of the day. And what a series it looks like it's going to be. No one could have predicted that draft phase to start us off. It's definitely interesting, and I can't wait to see what we actually see come out of it, because Weapon Power Kestrel for East Asia seems to be one of their strongest picks that they really go for. Can we possibly see a Crystal Rona in the jungle? Maybe, that would be pretty neat. But, you know, we really got to talk a little bit about the Adagio, Arden, and Finn combination, so... Definitely some crazy picks here. Will it pay off for Pain? We'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. You know they surprised people yesterday by beating Elite 8 2-0 to make it to the quarterfinals. I'm sure they'll surprise a lot of people, even if they can take a single game off Ace Gaming, who looked so strong earlier in Group D. Yeah, I think Ace Gaming is definitely one of uh, everybody's favorites coming into this tournament. You know, they were able to bring down rocks throughout the regular seasons. And then, you know, coming into this close competition, we've seen it very back and forth between North America. Obviously lost TSM and Rocks, the top two from last year, so things have really Battle switched up. We are going to jump onto the Halcyon Fold. It's the first game of our third series of the day. It's Pain Gaming taking on Ace Gaming. And it is the battle of two titanic teams here. Who shall swim and who shall sink? We'll find out. Well, it's not looking like any uh, Crystal Rona for me here today, man. That's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> But Tassa will be uh, go ahead and getting on that Crystal Kestrel. Can be a very strong pick if you set the plays up. Gonna have a little bit of engage here as they fight around that first Trient. Churnwalker so good at level one, of course, for the extra damage you get out. The Elder Trient will be started up here by Ace. Pain Gaming trying to respond. Finn with that polite company drags them back. The hooks and the chains are still on. Trient goes across it towards Ace Gaming and Pain at retreat. Yeah, they're going to get out unscathed. Everybody makes it out. No first blood. But as you mentioned, that Trian is going to go ahead and go over to the side of Ace Gaming. So they take themselves a very slight advantage here in the beginning. And now, you know, pretty common rotations here. We'll have the jungler and the laner rotate to the back, get that ambient gold, ambient experience. And that kind of helps just get the game rolling. Obviously, the carries have more expensive builds than the captains, you know, just based on the price of the items. And, uh... You want that damage to come through on a Crystal Kestrel. It needs to be there early so they can really push an advantage. Triple Crystal bit already on that Kestrel. Will be taken in the jungle, whereas we have Creation on the Rona in the lane. 
We were a little bit surprised not to see the double poke composition because earlier on Ace brought out a Samuel Kestrel alongside Aroma to really poke down their opposition and take down TSM incredibly quickly. They broke the choke turret at the seven minute mark in that game. Here they've gone for something a little bit more team fight focused, perhaps a little bit more defensive as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's one of the big compositions that EA has really been known for. You bring that Kestrel into the lane, they're very good at forcing up the wave early on, pair it with a Crystal Jungle and it just makes it very easy to rotate up and overpower the enemy. Bit of action here as Creation jumps into the fray, looking for the damage down on towards Pain. The escape down towards the bottom side of it already. We see the Adagio go down. Ace Gaming with first blood and second blood off the back of that fight. And third blood, they actually get an ace. Only two minutes in, living up to their name. Yeah, great plays coming out of them. And, you know, looking out over here, this Arden appears to be going on to a, uh, another Crystal Arden build, and that's going to be kind of a fun setup later on. You know, with the fin, I can see some really cool plays getting set up with the Forced Accord through the Gauntlet Wall. We'll just have to see if they're able to execute on it. That is going to leave a Weapon Adagio in the lane, where he does have some advantages. He has a very long range, can get a lot of basic attacks out safely, but he has to be worried about that heavy dive coming out of the Rona. Adagio does not have any way to get out of combat once the enemy team has committed onto him. Ace Gaming bringing out the Churn Walker early on here as well. It's a pick that we've seen prioritized by a lot of teams, but we haven't always seen it be the most effective throughout this tournament. I'm sure Youngju here will have a great amount of experience on this hero and will show us just how you play Churn Walker. Yeah, Churn's actually been a hero that's been banned quite frequently in this Worlds event. Again, we are on 2.10 and... Uh... They don't want anything to do with those hooks and chains, as well as the uh, big AOE stun that can come out of that trespass can really sway the way a fight goes. Uh, if you pair it up with an echo, you can really set up some really beautiful combos for your team. And it's going to be all about pain gaming here. They need to be careful on what they allow Lung, uh, Youngju to do. If you allow him to position Adagio favorably for this Kestrel, you could, you could essentially see it someone get pulled into the active camo, and that could be real devastating. It could be incredibly devastating. The Crystal Power Kestrel does a huge amount of work with that active camo. The third Treant did go down towards Ace as well, so they have secured themselves about a 2,500 gold lead, only four minutes in, looking incredibly strong, but haven't put too much damage down on towards that turret in the lane yet. Now, they haven't been able to, again, you know, if it was a Kestrel in the lane, you know, we might have been able to see a little bit more uh, wave push. A little bit slower farm early on for the Rona, so we're going to have to see how things go out. The one-shot, one-kill, going to just go a little bit north of that one. And uh, now with Ace Gaming coming into the lane, that's just going to be Pain rotating back. And uh, Sir Muster just making sure that he's safe here, looking out for those hooks and chains. And it's odd to see Ace Gaming in this position because they're fighting for the pride of East Asia, really. We expected a lot of East Asian teams to get through to the quarterfinals. It's only Ace Gaming left, the champions of that region, fighting for the pride of the area from which they come. And I think a lot of people will predict Ace Gaming coming into this tournament and, uh, coming into this tournament and into this series as the favorites. But Pain Gaming definitely stand in their way. They've had upsets before. Continued pressure on this turret in the lane as well by Ace, but not quite able to get any kills as of yet. Yeah, and as we see the Kestrel come into the lane, that is one huge thing for these Crystal Junglers that capitalize early based on their Crystal Ratios. We see those Glimmer Shots chunking out Pain Gaming, and now Ace might even look to get some damage down on this turret as they have a full wave here. The Screen of Earth, quite low, doesn't have the Fountain either. Ace have one of their own alongside the Shatter Glass for Tasso, so they're looking for the turret. They will get it down, so Mustard going to be the first to fall. The turret somehow still alive as that barrier comes back up, but eventually it will go down as well. One shot, one kill. Threads the knee between the two members of Pain Gaming. But Ace get exactly what they want off that push. Yeah, Ace take a huge lead here up. In under six minutes, four kills, first turret. They're working on a 4,000 gold lead as they find Falcon Dorian down here in the jungle. Working and, on a fifth kill as well. <laughs> yeah, but now they're gonna, you know, again, objective control is strong for the East Asia region. They take down that Crystal Sentry. They're right here, they've already got a kill. There's no possible way Pain Gaming could have came and contested it. And now that's a whole jungle rotation as well going over the side of Ace Gaming. And this is what we expected to see from Ace Gaming as well. They're so strong, they're so methodical in the way they play. It's objective, and then you push into the enemy jungle, you steal away these camps, you take the gold away from the enemy, and we're starting to see Pain Gaming just slowly choked out of this game. There's not really much on the Halcyon fold for them to collect. Look at Falcon, his CS is 16 at the moment, and Creation and Tassa are sitting up around that 50 mark. Yeah. 
Ace have done a great job with their rotations. You know, any time they get the opportunity to get this Kestrel in the lane, they know Adagio's a little far forward. Those Glimmer shots rain through. And I mean, if you land all four, we saw, I mean, it was a dead Adagio. So even if you don't get the kill, Ace is a very smart team. If they force the enemy back, they'll turn their aggression very quickly onto the objective and just continue to push that lead. It's, it's well worth not getting a kill to get the objective if you can do so. Definitely is. Tassa gets an early infusion as well, has that one ticking over, building up towards his next CP item, likely to be the clockwork there on the Kestrel. Breaking point and Serpent's Mask already on creation as well. Remember, we're not even eight minutes into this game and he's already sitting at two completed tier three items. You can see Muster's trying to respond to this pressure from Ace Gaming by getting himself a weapon infusion, but is that enough at this point? Yeah, and uh, Weapon Infusion now in pocket of Ace Creation as well. He's a little bit low on health right now, but we know how sustainable Rona can be. Obviously, the fortified health that comes through the Red Mist, uh, as well as has the Healing Flask ready to go, and that Serpent's Mask in his build as well can be just so easy. You know, it, it makes... It makes young Jew's job so much easier because he can save all of his utility for Tassa, who on the Crystal Kestrel, if he gets damaged in the middle of combat, he's not going to be able to use that active camo to dance around the fight. And, you know, as we get into that point, it's going to be very important for Jesuino Farah to keep vision control. Even if you're not winning the vision control, you have to have enough that Tassa doesn't just have free reign over the map like right now. Oh my goodness gracious me, that is disgusting. That shouldn't be allowed in vainglory. Must have chunked out the one shot, one kill will take half of the Rome's health as well. That Finn is struggling as he tries to get back towards the lane, but Ace just using the zone control they have with that Kestrel going towards the turret. Here comes the Gauntlet Falcon trying to stop Ace in their tracks. The turret will fall very quickly. It goes down, Creation still alive. Muster low in the back line as well as the active camera comes in. The aggressive play here from Tassa is he's looking for more kills. The Trespass gets the stun onto Falcon Dorian. The Finn just about getting away, but Falcon's been pulled back in. One Whoa. shot, one kill! Goodbye! Ace Gaming get two and they look to push towards the choke point turret here as well. Eight minutes in, they are looking to close out this game really quickly and they will get their third turret of the game. It's been perfect thus far from our Korean champions. The rotations coming out of this team are absolutely amazing. As we see, that control of just taking down the objectives is so huge for Ace. They just do such a beautiful job forcing Sir Muster out early. The trespass comes through, stuns up Falcon Dorian. They're able to clean up that kill. And then Tassa, the rotation down to the jungle to get that one oh. shot, one kill around the fin just takes down Adagio. I didn't realize one shot, one kill was a targeted ability to nominate. It seems to be for Tassa. That was absolutely beautiful. Ace Gaming, seven kills to nil up. We are less than 10 minutes into this game and they have a 10 thousand gold lead denominate looking at a perfect game here as well for them having given up a treant having given up a gold miner having given up a turret nor have they given up a kill and they want a few more for their own into the break comes in the active camo from tassa they're going to walk straight into that stun fountain used by pain gaming but another stun and tassa is just shredding through pain they live up to their name they feel the pain and ace gaming get another ace for themselves they've done such a great job they've been in the driver's seat all game long Coming off of a great triple trespass stun there out of Young Ju. This looks like Ace. They might even just be looking to close out this game. They have the Ace Wave minions, and they're splitting the aggro. Are they going to win this game before 11 minutes? Pain are trying to stop them, but I don't think Ace really care. Young Ju in that front line is looking for the re-engage. The active camo is absolutely deadly. The stealth in from Tata. He's waiting to see Pain overextend here. The pull back. Falcon Dorian in that front line. The sentry's been eliminated. One shot, one kill. It's going to connect. It's just we know Barrel Wall. Tank that one up for the time being. You can see Ace just want to close this one out. They want to get to game two, and that's exactly what Creation is trying to do. The stun once again. Muster just about surviving up towards the back line. The dive in from Falcon. Muster's going to go down. Creation doing a lot of work. Falcon's low as well as Tassa will eventually take him out with the glimmers if he can connect. Falcon dodging around with his fancy feet, but the crystal goes down just before the 11 minute mark and Ace are absolutely dominant in game one. What a performance there from Ace Gaming. Incredibly strong stuff from them. A perfect game to start off their series against Pain. Yeah, it was a beautiful execution all the way around. Ace Gaming at no point looked like they were struggling with this one. 
It, the plays coming out of Tassa, it's been a long time since I have seen a Kestrel have quite the impact as that. I mean, the one-shot one-kills, as you mentioned, they looked like they were targeted abilities, and <laughs> man, great game out of Ace. Incredible performance by them. Pain Gaming have a lot to come back for in that second game of the series. We're going to hand it back across towards the analysts to break down that perfect game by Ace Gaming. Thank you very much, guys. What a game coming out from Ace. What a performance. First time on the main stage, and they are looking to make a good impression. Sub 12 minute finish. I, like, I, I don't even know what I just witnessed. I, I feel like that was some kind of crime how fast they did that one. <laughs> that was a very, very strong play from Ace Gaming. But the, my favorite thing about it was the adaptability. We talked about Blackfeather being able to be flexed into weapon or crystal, depending on what your opponents do. They pick up the Kestrel. Everyone expects Weapon Kestrel to come out. And then the body blockers come through for Pain Gaming. I like the idea that Pain Gaming brought to the table. Say, you know what? We're going to body block this Kestrel so that it can't just melt through us. And the Ace Gaming just say, okay, we're going to switch this up to the splash damage build on the Kestrel and just hit your frontliners and deal damage to your back line. It was so smart. I mean, it also was about the fact that we talked earlier, the B side capabilities and when you go into the draft on that B side you have an advantage of flexing your draft and flexing your picks that you had picked also that's why you see some teams try to prioritize flex picks such as the Kestrel such as the Blackfeather that you touched on and it just left Pain Gaming with no win condition at all past the early game they didn't force anything I mean they couldn't Kestrel was nine or ten levels at nine minutes he was more than one level per minute that is crazy yeah, it was actually a ridiculous performance coming out from Ace. We have a clip of one of the team fights later on into the game. I say later on into the game. There really wasn't a later <laughs> on in this game. But Suijay, talk me through what happened here. Yeah, this was insane. I mean, it all started at 220 when Ace got the first Ace, and their rotations are just on point. But you can see they put so much pressure that even with a tanky front line, it just wasn't enough. And you can see Tasa on this CP Kestrel, his positioning, his ultimates right there. <laughs> 840, that was such a crazy, oh, and three turrets are down already. And at the six minute mark, they were up 4,000 gold. Yeah, I mean, it's... they aced their enemies. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my favorite thing from that replay is just, you know, we talked about the fact that Ace Gaming liked to prioritize the objectives. Pain Gaming initiated that fight with the gauntlet and no one really took damage from Pain until the turret was already down because Ace just said, we're taking this objective, whether yeah. you like it or not and then we'll deal with looking for kills. Payne saying that they do not want to deal with this Churnwalker again. Lyra was banned by Ace, and now the first picks have come on through. Vox for the side of Payne, and Arden for the side of Ace Gaming. The one thing I'm surprised about is the fact that Ace Gaming did show their CP Kestrel last game. I feel like against Payne Gaming, they could have just went with things that other teams have already seen in this competition and just played out and relied on their strengths as a team rather than secret picks such as the CP Kestrel. They could have saved it for later rounds. Instead, they showed it. So now other teams know that they play it. But the thing is with the CP Kestrel, no one really plays the CP Kestrel because it's nowhere near as strong as the weapon variant. And so uh -huh. I, I feel like it's one of those things that they wouldn't very likely have pulled out in a later round. And that could be why they ended up doing here. And it just made so much sense with what Pain Gaming was bringing to the table in terms of competition. I really like what Pain did here, taking a Vox and, and taking away Kestrel from yeah. Creation. That's really, really smart for them because Tasa and Creation played Kestrel so well. Blackfeather is a very smart pickup here. It's going to be CP. Nah. And now it's going to be Kashka and probably a weapons guy potentially. Or, wow, Glaive is picked up here All right. to counter. I, I, Going into 2.10 is one of the picks that I wanted to see a lot more. I talked about it yesterday as well. In the lane, going against the Vox and the Blackfeather, two heroes that are fairly squishy, especially the CP Blackfeather that we're going to be seeing coming out in the jungle. With the crit buff to the Glaive on his B ability and the life stacks or life steal stacks on the ultimate, you can definitely make it work. And it's all about the early game aggression here for Ace Gaming. Can we also just take a moment to talk about how quick yeah. Ace Gaming is with this draft, knowing exactly what they want and locking in their selections almost immediately when it's their turn to pick. That shows me that they are extremely confident in both their preparation and their performance in game. If I was paying, I would take Grace here. There we go. Or Lance, <laughs> but Grace would be an Weatherman obvious pick here because you can just stay on top of the Vox, stun using the B ability, to get Divine Intervention to whoever needs it, probably the Vox, um, and save him when he gets after an auto position here.
All right, well, it seems like Ace Gaming perhaps have a dinner reservation for later on or something, and they've got to get through this series quickly to get there. That's what it feels like to me. How quickly are they going to be able to get through this one, though? Do we feel like Pain Gaming are going to be able to battle their way back into this series? It just doesn't seem likely. Ace Gaming is such a strong team. They're on the caliber of Cloud9, and we saw what Cloud9 was able to do to Pain Gaming. I think we're just going to have very similar situation here. Right. Yeah, especially with the Koshka and the Glaive, I have to agree there. So prediction-wise, it feels like you two are already going for yep. Ace on this one. Sweejay, would you agree with them? Totally Ace. I mean, Koshka and Glaive, that's such a strong comp early game and ganking potential. Ace for sure. All right, we have a full Ace desk here alongside me. We'll see if Pain Gaming can upset the analysts, if they can upset the Apple cart and go 1-1 in this series, or if it's going to be Ace pushing this to a 2-0 lead. It's time to get into game number two of this quarterfinal and pass it back up to our casters. Thank you very much, Munch. I am still Medic. This is still Denominate, and we are here still for Ace Gaming versus Pain Gaming. What a first game we saw, and now we have to see if Pain Gaming can react. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, the amount of control and just dominant force that Ace were able to put onto the fold earlier, that was just, they could not have played it more perfect. So I think if you're paying gaming, it, you've got a little bit better of a draft this time around, despite maybe going a little bit of an unorthodox manner to get there. Um, I, I think they stand a better chance this time around. The Crystal Arden to me felt a little gimmicky. Uh, I can see a world where it works, but it involves you winning very early on. Uh, it just, it was a little bit questionable and to me. And it's hard to win into Ace Gaming. Like, we saw TSM yes. collapse against them <laughs> earlier on today. We saw Pain Gaming struggle in the last game. And once again, it looks like Ace perhaps have gone for a slightly earlier composition. We are on to the Halcyon Bowl. Game two of the third quarter final of the day. Ace Gaming 1-0 up against their Brazilian rivals. And Pain have a lot to do if they're going to win back the faith of the analyst desk. Yeah, definitely a lot of hard work ahead of them indeed, and Ace is going to come down here and spot out this Treant started up, but I think Payne probably going to get this one. Youngju does not have the blood for blood, so that's just going to be Falcon Doran securing that one, topping himself up on health dangerously low. But uh, I do want to make note over here on Creation's build, uh, so it is going to be a lane glaive. But he has actually foregone the uh, Book of Eulogy start and has gone ahead and picked up some boots and the weapon blades. So looking for that aggressive rotation now. He's level two. They started their backs. Can they pick up this first fight? Looking for a little bit of a steal here. The backs will go down. That Trient's still alive, though. Creation will be able to get in there. The Trient goes down towards Tassa. Falcon Dorian quite low, but Ace Gaming not able to get too much out of that. Pain Gaming have already retreated behind that turret line. Yeah, they've done a good job, and now Tassa, he, you know, started the double crystal bit start on Kashka, pretty common. A very bursty here early on, especially into targets like Blackfeather and Vox, who have a low base health pool, especially very early on here in the game. And the real chance that Pain Gaming stands is they have to make it pretty substantially far into this game. You know, we're going to have to see, you know, the 15, 16, 17 minute mark this time around if they want to uh, uh, pull out a victory here. Bringing three people into the lane as well. Just we know just trying to trade with Youngju. It's not going to do too much work. And Creation, it's perhaps going to struggle slightly in the lane. Melee into ranged matchups are not the easiest matchups to navigate. Yeah, pretty rough when you don't have that book of eulogies either, too. So it gives you a little bit of sustain. But oh, oh just we know went in and Creation was waiting for him. Baited and outsmarted. Creation takes first blood. Yeah, he did use that healing flask, but I mean, picked up a kill, he survived through it all, and they might even have a chance to set something up on Muster here, who is also very, very low. Afterburn's coming up in three seconds, and Young Ju's here. Oh, Muster no. realizes that it could <laughs> be a possibility. We'll just back away. Young Ju's gonna try and stop the port, and we'll be able to keep Muster in the lane for the time being. But with a Menion Candied lane, it's gonna take a bit of time before Ace can get this one into the turret of pain. Yeah, they're just going to look to clear this one out, and that's going to be when the Creation's probably going to make his opportunity to rotate back to the shop, uh, pick up some of those items so that he can have a little bit more sustain here in the lane. As we see Tassa there for a second, was going to go ahead and take away that Trient, really start this snowball off early. We've already got first blood over onto Creation with that beautiful afterburn setup. And uh, now, now is that time that he uh, needs, to, <laughs> needs to get back in shop. He's, uh, you know, Sir Musker's come back in the lane. He has the Blazing Salvo. He has a little bit of armor as well. So not a whole lot of clear yet for Vox, though. Still skips out on the Book of Eulogies for creation, though. Heavy Steel, six sins going down 
as much damage as possible. Tassa perhaps a little bit overextended as Pain have collapsed into their own jungle, so Mustard is quite low. Tassa's gonna try and retreat down towards the bottom side. Youngju's there as well. He's going down. Here goes Tassa jumping back in. Mustard's low. Youngju gets taken out. Pain Gaming get their first kill of the series, but here comes Creation, and there goes Falcon. Somehow surviving, eventually gets taken out. Creation now has to try and get away, but Mustard and Josuino Ferret are not gonna give up on this chase. Creation will fall. He gets extinct. And Pain Gaming get a two for two scoreline early on in this game. Yeah, signs of life coming out of the Brazil heart probs here. Really trying to show that they can take uh, take their stance against Ace Gaming here. That was a very quick first game, but sometimes those are just the easiest to get over. You know, you can look at it and be like, well, we didn't have a good draft. Things just went very poorly from the beginning. It's very easy to turn around off of that, you know, as opposed to a 30-minute grueling loss where you were back and forth, you were so close, couple couple hits on a vein crystal away, you know, things of that nature. So Ace, they stayed a little bit too long, separated from creation, and they paid for it. And you have to remember, a lot of people underestimated Pain Gaming. You know, they said they'd be third in the group, they wouldn't win a game, they'd get eliminated on day one, and then they were able to beat Elite Eight, one of the SEA teams coming into the tournament to get through to the quarterfinals. And you can see those signs of brilliance in Pain. You can see the rotations, you can see the collapses. We didn't see them in game one, but Pain are looking a lot more coordinated here in game two. Oh, absolutely. They saw an opportunity, but he almost saw one as well. Yeah, but it must have will survive because Josuino Ferra is waiting, ready to help out his laner and keep that box alive. We are starting to get towards these first item spikes here as well, Denominate. Must has gone Poison Shiv. You've got the fountain completed on Josuino Ferra. Yet to be a fountain on Youngju, but he does have the gold in his inventory for it. Yeah, he absolutely does, and, you know, Creation has completed that Sorrow Blade. This is a really big spike of burst damage for the Glaive, and, you know, you have to be very careful. Sir Muster has built a little bit of armor already, so he's going to cut down a little bit, but, again, Blackfeather, low health pool, is very susceptible to that burst damage that the Glaive can provide, so he's going to be really needing to land his on points and get that barrier to help him survive throughout these fights. Uh, the Poison Shiv, as you mentioned, you know, Fairly common first item here on the Vox. And uh, Jezuino Fiera, when we get later into the game, when we get that Divine Intervention online, that's going to help the Vox be able to dance around, stay in the fight, stay healthy. And then also, because it's triple melee, that Holy Nova could be devastating. A lot of work. Falcon Dorian's gone for the Aftershock first on this CP Black Feather. We've seen Black Feather so impactful on 2.9, has been often banned throughout Worlds thus far. When he gets taken up by a team, he does have incredible efficacy and wins a lot of those games. Creation's gonna jump in, waiting for just Wiener Ferret to try and react. Leonova's not gonna get the knock-up. The wait for it was used as well from Muster, so perhaps we'll see Tassa going in for the re-engage. The reflex block is available here on Muster, so Tassa is holding the trigger, waiting the prime time to pounce in and get that yummy catnip frenzy down. Falcon Dorian doesn't have a reflex block of his own and will just fight out Tassa in the jungle. A lot slower pace game, the knock-up onto Josuino Ferrer. Here comes the yummy catnip frenzy, but the fountain came out just in time to keep Pain alive for the time being. Underneath the turret, Ace continuing to dive in, but Falcon Dorian is here to help the rest of his team. Ace Gaming have been able to retreat back behind the turret. Here they go, back in, looking for the fight for the first kill. Has almost gone down. Tassa's the first to fall. Josuino Ferrer somehow surviving off towards the top side of the fight. And you can see Ace realize there's not much more they can do here, because Muster's willing to chase forward. He's willing to step up to the Korean champions and say, not today, today is the day of Brazil. Muster will get the second kill of the fight and Pain Gaming come up huge. Yeah, and, and they couldn't have come up with all of this in a better time. They take beautiful opportunities oh, where Taft has gone a little too away. far and turn things around. That is, that is just BM right there. Stealing away a tree and then flashing the ammo back at him, but that's what Ace Gaming are. They're an aggressive team. They haven't been able to get this early aggression down this game. Pain Gaming have been able to react incredibly well. Yeah, I think it's been a lot of Tassa going a little bit too far. For example, in that last fight, they did have Jezuino Fera very low. He used that Yummy Catnip Frenzy in under the turret. You know, you've, you've now damaged an enemy hero. That turret aggro switches right onto you. You're locked up for the two and a half se or 2.2 seconds, just like Jezuino Fera was on the Grace. That's a lot of damage that adds up from that turret very quickly on. 
the point Pain don't really want to fight. Muster sitting on about 1,500 gold. Would like to be able to go back and start building up some weapon power. Probably looking breaking point later on in the game as well if you can get those stacks. Tornado Trigger finished for creation alongside the Sorrow Blade. We'll have to see if Ace Gaming can play around these small windows of opportunity that teams have. You're looking to take fights when the enemy team hasn't bought their next item, hasn't got that second tier three, and that's exactly what they're doing as they take down Falcon Dorian and a great yummy Captain Frenzy into Gauntlet combination to stun into the wall as well. Just Wiener Vera just can't go anywhere. He's trying to get away with the fountain, but I think he is gonna fall as well. Young Ju secures the kill. Rome on Rome combat. There's the breaking point. Too little, too late for Pain Gaming as once again they lose two members in the lane. Yeah, they do. It was a good fight for Ace Gaming. They were able to combo those stuns very, very efficiently. They find two kills. They're going to get a gold mine as well. And this build on Creation is very, very aggressive and works very well on Glaive because he just naturally scales well with crit. But Sir Muster. Tempting for the seal, it would be a massive one if you could get it. Unable to secure it, Ace Gaming get the gold payout, and with it, a 2,000 gold lead. You can see that they want to try and use this advantage as well. Infusion on Tassa and infusion in the inventory of creation as well. They've been so good at picking their moments to fight. And it's the reason they come out of Korea as the reigning champions. It's the reason they're the only East Asian team left alive in the tournament, but Pain Gaming are trying to have something to say about that. Atlas Pauldron now finished onto Tassa to try and shut down Star Master on that Vox. Yeah, and it'll do a good job doing so if he can land it because this Vox build so far is a lot of attack speed that takes a lot of time to ramp up. There's no Sorrow Blade, there's no Monocles in here. Uh, it does take a little bit more time to build up that breaking point when you don't have raw weapon damage to go with it. Jump in from Tassa. The Reflex Box come out. Youngju with the Re-engage, there's a yummy Captain Frenzy, gets a stun, but the Vox is still alive to do a lot of damage in this fight. Look at those breaking point stacks. Look at Ace on the back foot, realizing they've taken a bad fight, and there's the first kill for Pain, but they're not done yet. They're trying to get on towards the back line. Tassa there, the Rose Offensive, Falcon Dorian just can't find the on point, but they will find the turret, and Pain Gaming are actually starting to take the advantage in this game. They're still behind in gold, but Ace Gaming just seems so far on the back foot. Pain coming up huge once again in the lane. Yeah, they absolutely have, and it shows that you cannot sleep on this team. I mean, you know, the desk and us, you know, we were like, wow, Ace Gaming was really in control first game. I don't know if Payne has what it takes. And they're showing us wrong right now, and they're doing such a great job doing so. This combination between the Grace and the Blackfeather has just done so well. The barrier that Blackfeather provides himself when paired up with the Divine Intervention gives you that reduced damage. You have the barrier, you get that burst of health. It's just working out so well for them because Ace is focusing that target, and they just don't have the damage to get through. East Asia, a region known for their adaptability, sometimes not within a game, but definitely across the course of a series. My question is, now with Pain Gaming being the team in the advantage in this game, will we see adaptation from Ace Gaming? Will they change the, their playstyle? Will they stop looking for these picks? Because it seems that Tassa keeps engaging, and then immediately Pain Gaming are able to keep Muster alive and actually get those breaking point stacks up, and it's starting to win them these fights. Yeah, it absolutely has, and now Ace, they're looking to take a turn of their own. That they are unable to get it for the time being. Tassa gets jumped on by Falcon Dorian and starts to walk back towards the Sanctuary, trying to find a little bit of relief as Pain continue in. There's the Afterburn blocked out with the Crucible. Here comes the Gauntlet from Youngju, trying to catch them all in, but another block on the Yummy Cabinet Frenzy, and Muster still alive, building up the Breaking Point stacks. The damage coming out from that box is absolutely monumental, and already they've got one kill, and they're looking for a couple more. The wait for it won't quite connect, but Tassa has to get away, and so do the rest of Aces. Pain just do absolute work in the lane here. They're gonna get their second turret of the game and what a turnaround this has been from game one. A perfect game that ended in 11 minutes. Now Pain Gaming at the 13 minute mark are a thousand gold ahead of our Korean champions. Yeah, they're doing an absolute great job. And you know, Pain, I, I thought it was gonna be a little bit later before we saw these builds come on, but unfortunately Tassa has not been able to get that early aggression the way he would have so hoped. The on points coming out of Falcon Dorian and again, the uh, the beautiful stuns coming out of Jezuino Farah have just given them the time that they've been able to turn around these fights. That is one of the really rough things is that triple melee, you are 
all susceptible to that stun when you're trying to get onto that back line, and that allows Vox additional time to ramp up damage. Now, I do want to make note real quick, he's picked up a piercing spear, so he's likely looking towards going into either a tension bow or a bone saw uh, and not the raw weapon damage. It's just Swinofo who goes in for the engage once again, and Ace Gaming just immediately on the back foot, trying to find a way away from the fray, but they're not going to be allowed to get out of this one. Pain Gaming get another kill for themselves, and it's all pain all the time now. Just Swinofo pops a charm back at him, just saying, anything you can do, I can do better. You may have got a treant, but I will take your life. And the last few fights have been the same story for Ace. They just cannot find a way to break through this pain front line. Yeah, they haven't been in now pain. They're going to do, uh, you know, just what they need to do. They need to maintain all the objective control they can. They need to stay in control of this game because if they give Ace that opportunity to, to catch up, they will. I mean, Ace will take any opportunity and run with it. That was close. Almost stole that away, but pain able to secure it for themselves. And it's the first time we've really seen Ace push this far back since the Hunters series earlier on today where they went one and one. Pain are 2,000 gold ahead with a composition that only keeps scaling the later we get on into the game. And perhaps Ace have missed their opportunity in this game. It, it definitely feels a little bit that way. Again, the, the early capitalization didn't work out for them, uh, specifically because there was a couple fights that they just, they either fought a 2v3, took them a little bit too long to group up, went a little too far underneath turret, and that gave a big spike of gold and momentum over to the side of Pain Gaming, who again, needed to get the gold, they need to get later in the game and get the builds up. And when, when Ace Gaming just, you know, hands themselves over, it makes it very easy for this Vox to get to the point that he can be that hyper carry. Well, let's have a look at just where we are in terms of build. The Bone Saw completed on Mustang. He's now at three weapon power items. Is Pain trying to defend their turret here. Needs to be a little bit cautious because Ace have taken that one down. The wait for it came out as well. Here comes the flank as they try and dive onto that back line. Falcon Dorian doing a lot of work. The Gauntlet, but still that box is alive on the outside of it. And you need to watch Muster because he's the one. He actually dives into the stun there. And Ace might try and capitalize. The Yummy Cabinet Frenzy is blocked out, as is the Afterburn. Tassa having to run away on that back line. Youngju trying to get away from Falcon Dorian, but the Heart Dog stacks are building up creation in the midst of all our pain but he is going to be the one focused down now he falls Tassa trying to get away it's a double for pain can't quite get the triple and pain gaming once again able to win a fight yeah even if you don't get the triple you've got to be happy uh, you know if you're pain gaming right now again that that first game was a landslide I thought it really was going to set the tone but pain have come through looking so strong let's get into this replay as ace they do take down that first turret but unfortunately not working the same way it did last game they get engaged on and there just wasn't enough damage coming down onto this Vox we'll see Tassa jump back in the uh, Vox does get stunned up but divine intervention comes through the reflex blocks comes through the the repositioning coming out of the sonic zoom they just never were able to keep consistent damage up and now pain they've got themselves a crack and they only have three turrets standing between them and a victory over ace gaming and what a monumental victory it would be after such a devastating game in game one pain gaming have adapted they've come back they said anything you can do we can do better and they're looking to take a win here off ace gaming who 2 owed tsm earlier today a lot of people looked at Pain and said they're just going to fall out in the group stages where they are proving us entirely wrong. The pride of Brazil coming up massive in this second game of the best of five series. There are, of course, more games to come, but Pain Gaming need to secure this one first to equalize it at one and one. Wow. This is Vainglory Worlds. This is the best of the best, and Pain is proving you cannot count them out. They did their work to get here, and they are showing exactly how they did it. And now Payne's coming in. Sweeno Fair looking for the flank here. They get the wait for it down on towards Tassa. He's going to get chased back towards the Sanctuary. The Kraken at about half health as it pushes in. And now Ace Gaming need to regroup. They need to work out, is there an avenue? Is there a way? Is there a possibility that we find an engage in this fight? Because that Kraken is still pushing in. The Yummy Cabinet Frenzy is going to come out. And Ace Gaming on their last legs. Payne Gaming looking for the win here. They're taking down the second Crystal Turret. They don't really give a damn about Ace. They just want the win they just want the crystal and they are gonna get it they're gonna equalize this series unless ace have something final to say but they just can't do it uh, ki uh next <laughs> Bay crystal goes down i talked too quickly there i was just surprised that pain gaming were able to take the win over ace and equalize the series at one and one yeah what a beautiful turnaround by pain there in game number two and you know hopefully we've got some uh some pain gaming fans down in the stage that'll help cheer them on and Maybe they can bring down Ace. Maybe we won't see East Asia, who was expected to have both teams go all the way. 
they might not make it here out of the uh, the quarterfinals. What a confident performance by Payne as well. You know, they just held Ace at arm's length until they were ready to take the engages, to take the fight. Even when they were dived between their two turrets, they were very willing just to wait out these fights. And when they came online, they really came online. Yeah, I'm, I'm more excited than I thought I would be for game three here. This is such an even matchup. What I'm really happy about is that all the analysts were wrong once again, and we're going <laughs> to hand it back across towards them. Munch, just tell us why you guys can't predict a series. Now, just to clarify, Medic, I predicted Pain Gaming <laughs> coming on into here, so you can't pin that one on me, but he's absolutely right, guys. It's the three curse. Is, uh, the three I don't zero like this, curse. I don't like this prediction game anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can, I mean, we, can we stop playing this whenever, one now? <laughs> whenever you all agree with each other, that's when the prediction is wrong. Pretty much. I know, right? It's when all three of us agree with the yeah. team, it just curses that team and they lose. Let's talk a little <laughs> bit about that game, though, because Pain have really come into their own. Maybe they just needed a game to warm up. Maybe now this is the real pain that we're going to be I seeing. I mean, honestly, I'm just going to call out Ace Gaming on their arrogance right here. I saw the Kestrel CP pick last game. I thought they were showing something that they had as a pocket pick. It looks like they're just going for things that they feel like would work regardless of whether they're strong or not with the Glaive lane this time around. And good on Pain Gaming, showing that they're not that type of team to be disrespected like that. Yeah, absolutely. Stepping up and you saw... <laughs> Towards the start of the game, there was a couple of charms, a couple of recalls being thrown out, a little bit of BM from Ace, and the second pain started to get a lead. They were more than happy to throw it straight back the other way. We do have a replay of one of the fights during that game, and this is a good example of pain managing to capitalize on the situation that they found for themselves. Yeah, yeah. this is the fight here where you can see the focus, the both got Atlas, the gun that comes out, it separates the team. Glaive here had about 15 breaking point stacks, but didn't stay in the fight to win this. But Koshka is just so squishy. And look at the Grace Divine Intervention. It just hews up Vox so much, and he's able to stack his Bone Saw, his Poison Ship, and a breaking point stack, and allow him to carry so hard. Look at the damage coming out there. And Glaive just didn't stand a chance. He didn't have Tier 3 boots. He couldn't stay on top of the Vox. And this is why Glaive was a very interesting pick or draft for Ace. Yeah, and for me, this was something where Ace was trying to get away from what they excel at. We talked so much about before and after game one of how Ace focuses on objectives. This is a composition that is purely designed to get kills and nothing else. Yeah. This is not an objective taking composition and that is not the way that Ace Gaming plays the game. So as much as I love the fact that Pain Gaming took that game, I, you know, I love the underdog story. This was primarily on Ace. All right, well, we'll have to see if that continues to be the case as the day goes on, as the series goes on. It is one apiece, though. Our South American superstars are onto the scoreboard here against Ace, and the pick and ban is underway. We have Lorelei being banned away by Paint to start things off, and then Lyra is the response. That's such an interesting ban there. It leaves Churnwalker open for P Pain, though, so will Pain pick up the Churnwalker here? Because last time they picked Arden over Churnwalker. I mean, if they do go for Churnwalker, though, they, that leaves Black for the open for Ace Gaming. That's a very dangerous pick to give over to Tasa. He will take it in the jungle and play it. STP would be devastating. So Pain Gaming, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to prioritize that Black for the pick instead. Yeah, and that, that's why I, I do like the Lyra ban there, because it does, as you mentioned, force either Churnwalker or Blackfeather. One of those two are going over to Ace Gaming oh, most likely, either. but Pain <laughs> throwing another wrench in the works, grabbing themselves the Vox. So Blackfeather, Churnwalker, so many strong picks available. They're all gonna, for Ace. they're all be open because I think Ace is gonna take the Kestro here because if they do not take the Kestro, it will be banned by Pain. Mm -hmm. So are you gonna go for the Churnwalker here or are you gonna take the Kestro? Let's see what happens because Arden, Blackfeather, Churn are all open. And this gives the B side actually a strength here because you're going to get two of those picks. They do opt for the Blackfeather. So again, you're expecting the Kestrel to be banned away. But like you just mentioned, Sweet Jay, this puts Pain in a tough spot. As long as Ace doesn't ban either the Churnwalker yeah. or... Well, they're going to ban the Churnwalker. I, that is I surprising. disagree with yeah. this so I was heavily. I was going to say, if they leave both open, then Payne has to ban Churnwalker or Kestrel. The other one gets through for Ace Gaming. I, I definitely agree there. The Churnwalker is a ban that's not the best for Hafs, but they do go for it, meaning that they have something else planned against Payne uh, Gaming. Yeah, the only thing I could see here is... Pain Gaming leaving the Kestrel, if they decide to leave the Kestrel open, which I think would be a mistake for them, and have something up their sleeves that they feel like will be able to deal with it, but Kestrel Blackfeather, you want to talk about flexibility. Both of those two can go either roll, either build path, 
and have great success. So the Kestrel ban, it had to come out yeah, there. Arden, yeah. I was, was going to say, the other thing that's still open as a Captain Hero, and that's Grace, perhaps yeah. is uh, the reason why they banned the Trimwalker, is because Arden is open, so they went for it. And now, like you mentioned, Sui just touched on it. Uh, Grace is open if Pain Gaming decides to go in that direction. Rona, as well, could be something that comes out here in the jungle for the side of Pain That'd Gaming. That would be surprising. But it, it would be surprising, but at the same time, you need something to deal with this Black Feather. And Rona has been the only pick that we have seen that has consistently been <coughs> able to go toe to toe with a black feather. You can do Grace and Kashka of Ox is a very strong composition that Pink can run here. And they can play Kashka, and with a Grace, that can put a lot of pressure onto this black feather with the quick rotations coming from the Kashka and the Grace, the the benediction um, that she can then use. Oh, they actually go with a Baptiste, and then will they go with the Grace here or switch it up? And the difficulty for Catherine, Pain Gaming. Batiste Catherine is still open. That's a composition that used to yeah. be so yeah. strong. A very long time. Is always the one. Vox is always the carry that goes yeah. along with that. I mean, I mean yeah. it just so brings so much CC out to the game, and that's why it used to be so strong. The Fearsome Shades with the Catherine Silences, too many abilities <laughs> to be blocked by the Crucibles that the opponent captains would carry. The reason why that comp kind of fell off and no one really plays it anymore, because Crucible got a buff. It's 1.5 seconds now in terms of the reflex block that uh, it gives. So that's a three second reflex block to counter both both the Silence and the uh, Fearsome Shade. And I think that's why this comp has not been picked as much. But Pain can try to run it and see if it could still work against Ace here and, and catch yeah. him off guard. I, I actually think the reason why it fell off was because a team started knowing how to play ranged compositions against it. Things like the Sky, things like the Kestrel that can keep their distance, then run backwards when the initiations come through. With Blackfeather and Arden already picked up, that's not a choice. There's also the fact that, you know, we've seen the, it, it's not going to come through here as they do grab the grace, but we had also seen the fact that it got banned away every single time. It got broken up all the time. And so teams just stopped running it because they knew they weren't going to be able to get it. So uh, they do lock in the grace for pain gaming. They really liked the grace last game, just being able to stay alive that little bit longer. But now Ace Gaming have the option of are they going to run this Black Feather as a weapon power? or Crystal, it all depends on the Slash They can also do Baron with a CP Blackfeather and just play the poke game and just jump around. And once someone's low, Blackfeather can go in and follow with a Baron jump jet onto that person and just burst them down before the Grace can Divine Intervention. However, there's no poison there if they do decide to pick that composition. I do think that would be a better choice for them trying to pick up a Baron, play the range uh, game instead of having a dive composition. Because if you have a dive composition against Vox, Batiste, and Grace, that's <laughs> three heroes that excel at kiting away and just keeping your opponents away from your carry. So I would prefer to see them go for something like the Black Feather or even the Sky Weapon Power that we've seen from North American teams. Absolutely. You can see that Ace... Mulling over their options. We were commenting in the first wow. draft of the day how decisive they were. The decision in the end will be the Samuel for Tassa, which means we're going to see the Black Feather going weapon power in the lane as well. Unless we see some craziness in a uh, lane Samuel, doesn't seem too likely to me. Uh, I feel like the idea here behind this composition for Ace is AoE damage with the Samuel make it difficult for the Grace to choose who she's going to put the Divine Intervention on. And if you're getting the splash damage, if you're getting two targets low, she can only divide the intervention one at a time. So Black Feather can execute the second target before the first divine intervention finishes. Yeah, I mean, until she gets Echo, but I do agree with you. The Samuel could very well work. However, I'm going to go with Pain Gaming when it comes to uh, predictions just because they have the Vox, they have the <laughs> Batiste, and Black Feather, because of the Samuel, will have to be weapon power, so he's going to be diving and playing in that melee range. All right, it's time to get on into this game. Predictions, gentlemen, as we go on in. Who is going to be taking this one? We'll start with you this time, Iraqi. I mean, as I mentioned, Pain Gaming. Pain Gaming? I, I think Ace Gaming is going to be able to pick this one up. They're going to be refocused after that loss. All right. I'm glad it's not 3-0. <laughs> I love Pain Gaming's draft, but I have to give this to Ace because Tasso Samuel is awesome. All right. We have two for Ace, one for Pain. We'll see how this one is going to pan out. It's time to pass it back up to Medic and Denominate and get on into this quarterfinal. Thank you very much, Mon Munch. And what a quarterfinal it is turning out to be. I don't think anyone expected Pain Gaming to be able to take a game off of Ace and not even to get the predictions of Iraqi Zoro in this game too. Basically means they've already won it, right? Uh, they very well could have. They turned things around and really kicked things into high gear for game number two. And you know, as you just mentioned, they won the uh, they won the vote there of Iraqi yep. Zoro. You know, if you're starting to swing some of the analyst desks, 
You made a huge statement, and you guys should really be proud of yourselves. That is definitely true, and we'll have to see how they're able to play out this composition, because we have a lot of power picks on the side of Ace. You've got the Black Feather, you've got the Samuel as well. Tassa Samuel is known to be incredibly strong. We saw him beat TSM with it earlier on. We'll have to see how well it goes in this game. It's game three of our third quarterfinal of the day. Ace up against Pain. One and one is the scoreline. So we've still got at least two games of juicy action to go. Yeah, we absolutely do. And as you, guys, you just mentioned, you know, Tassa's Samuel has been a very strong pick for him. Uh, it's one that they really started using with the Kestrel in the lane. We were talking about the Mage and the Kestrel earlier. So we know he has experience on this hero. And Creation on Blackfeather, uh, such a game-changing hero, is definitely scary to go into. But we've seen Pain don't really care about the odds. They don't really care about how scary the enemy opposition is. They are very willing to take every fight that they can. No fight gonna happen over the Elder Tree just yet. yet. Both teams posturing towards it, but they're not gonna see any action erupt. Ace Gaming are gonna come back towards it, but still decide against it. And it's probably gonna be a much slower start between these two teams in this game. Yeah, definitely looking to be. The Batiste will take a little bit of time to come online. He's gonna need to get some crystal power, you know, getting towards that Shatter Glass is really where he's gonna start to be a huge threat. If he's left alone early, but I mean, you know, a couple crystal bits can be huge for a Batiste if you're managing your soul shards properly. But when he's gonna be able to come through and get those massive AoE burst damage, that's gonna be that first tier three item completion is that huge spike. Uh, whereas, you know, the Vox is going to take a little bit more time. Samuel, he's going to have a very early spike in the level 2. He has that Drifting Dark. The way you play that hero from level 1 to level 2 changes very quickly. But throughout the mid and late game, he's going to need to get, like, three items online. Creation's taking a bit of burst here from some Muster and Falcon Dorian. In from the side is just We Know Fairer, but Creation will be able to retreat back underneath the turret. Waiting on those first item spikes, really, for both these teams. But Tass is willing to trade into just We Know Fairer. Holy Nova does come out to try and distract Ace Gaming, so Master popping that healing flask as well. Falcon Dorian's going to be re-engaged upon, and both teams incredibly low here, but neither team able to find that final shot, that final kill, to get the first blood in this matchup. Yeah, definitely not, but I do like, over on the side of Pain Gaming, you know, as Sui had mentioned, he does like the draft, I do as well. I really like the combination of the grace in the box that they had last game. And, you know, are they going to be able to pull off the same kind of feat? Are they going to be able to bring game number three to the side of Brazil and upset Ace Gaming? Well, what is it that makes it this combination so strong? Because both you and Iraqi Zoro have said, oh, I really like this draft from Pain Gaming because they've got the Vox, because they've got the Grace. But what is it about that combination that really stands out to you? Well, the Blackfeather specifically is very good at getting onto the back line and sticking onto that back line, able to get a lot of damage down, a lot of burst damage. The Divine Intervention that comes out of Grace is one key useful tool that she has, able to cut down some of that incoming damage by a percentage, as well as then also provide that big base heal at the end of it. Uh, you can get the Echo queue it up again. It gives Vox the sustainability that he needs with a hero like Blackfeather to dance around the fight, to build up the breaking point stacks, and then turn the aggression. You know, the fight might start with Vox on the back foot. Those breaking point stacks start to build up. All of a sudden, Blackfeather's dead, Samuel's dead, Arden's dead. You can really have a game-changing impact with the Vox if you're able to live long enough. So we're waiting for that disengage in fights from Pain. They're trying to back off. They're trying to wait until those stacks are built up and then go for the re-engage. We'll have to see exactly how the fights pan out because Ace will not want to give Pain an inch. They'll want to keep on the aggressive path. They'll want to get the poke out from Tassa as well. Yeah, and Tassa's done a good job coming up into the lane, making smart rotations. Look at the damage! That's a lot of burst. Tassa gonna get some more damage onto the Shuino Fair, and the final Malice hits its mark. Great stuff from Ace as they take first blood, and they're looking for a little bit more Falcon Dorian, perhaps a little bit overextended, but answers back with some bad mojo, and Ace do need to be a bit cautious because Master and Falcon Dorian do have some damage between them. Minion Candy pops to try and push in the lane. We'll have to see exactly how strong this is for Ace. Yeah, both sides use that minion candy, and now Ace, they're going to look to get some damage down here, and Muster has to be so incredibly careful right now. Is Creation a little bit overpushed here? Because Just We Know Fair has rejoined. The Vanguard gets Creation out of range of the Holy Nova, so Just We Know Fair unable to get the knock up. Muster healing up, another bad mojo onto Tassu in that backline. The Ordain comes out as well. Here's the knock up, but it's only really going to connect onto Youngju, and now Tassu will try and re engage. So Muster, not quite as healthy as he'd like to Ooh. be, just about gets away towards the backline. And Pain Gaming are standing their ground, but slowly. Slowly, their health bars are diminishing. 
Yeah, and Ace is doing such a good job maintaining control over the wave here. Again, Samuel so good at coming up. The splash damage, you know, you can help clear the wave while damaging the enemy heroes. And again, if they're able to force the enemy out of a fight, they don't even have to get the kill. But if you can turn your attention onto the turret when the enemy is too low to actually do anything about it, then you can take that objective early. You can uh, get the positional advantage as well as that big burst of gold in your pockets. You know, that might be the difference of finishing off a tier three before your opponent that can lead to the win in the next fight a little bit sooner. And that's exactly what you see right now. Tassa has the Dragon's Eye, Falcon Dorian going through a little bit of shield, hasn't been able to complete that Shatter Glass, hasn't been able to hit that power spike that we talked about on this Batiste. Yeah, and Youngju's getting to that point where he's going to be able to soak up a lot of the damage to that Falcon Dorian. If he plays far enough forward and allows Tassa to stay in the back line, it's going to be very, very difficult for Falcon Dorian to get a bad mojo to land onto Tassa. Well, Dane is going to go in onto Creation. Good double knock up there. They're looking for the fight, and that's a lot of damage on towards Creation, but the Fountain will heal him up. Not quite able to find that final bit of DPS. Must up with that Poison Shiv is applying the Mortal Wounds, which reduced the healing from the Fountain, but still Ace were able to get just enough gains. Now Pain Gaming are the ones using the Minion Candy to try and control the lane. I feel like this is going to be the story of the game for a little while. Another double knockup, and there's the kill on Tatasa. And Pain Gaming are the ones to strike first in this lane matchup. It's so, so close between these two teams. A lot closer than any of us expected it to be. Yeah, it definitely is. And... That fight really started to go the way of pain off the back of a beautifully timed Fearsome Shade coming out of Falcon Dorian. Oh, Mr. Muster. Another knock up on towards Youngju as they look for the further kill. And once again, Pain Gaming just able to capitalize on perhaps a little bit of mispositioning there from Ainx. Yeah, Pain starting to take an edge early, which they were able to do last game with the Vox. Jezuino Ferra not quite at that level six mark where the Divine Intervention comes online, but Tassa. Or well, Dane goes down onto Tassa to try and lock him out. They will get the turret and Pain Gaming now on the retreat. Muster there, but the fountain is used. They're going to try and chase down onto Jasuino Ferra, but I don't think they have enough chase on Jasuino Ferra. That is bold to say the least. In the face of the Korean champions, you flash them a kiss and say goodbye. And now Ace, they want retribution. They want a little bit of a fight after they've been disrespected by the Pain Gaming Rona that they're still unable to find the kills here. And once again, Pain Gaming able to escape. What a great early game from this Brazilian lineup. Yeah, they were able to escape, but I think this is going to be Ace taking down this turret. Falcon Dorian is coming up, but there's just, there's not really anything he's going to be able to do at this point. The turret is going to drop incredibly quickly, but now Ace have to make sure they get out Sir Muster and Jezuino Ferra. They did recall, topped up their health, you know, purchased a couple items here. We obviously see the breaking point and the Poison Shiv are now both complete on Sir Muster, as well as he's sitting on that level 8 infusion in his pocket, because again, he did just take that opportunity to hit the shop seen a lot of fights between these two teams early on in the games, but when we've had the early advantage for Ace, they are the team that tend to win. It's Ping Gaming who've been able to hold out these games, get later on, and then take the win at the end. We'll have to see if this game sticks to the script or if Ace Gaming are able to overcome this slower early game. This is probably the moment where Ace Gaming is going to really have a huge opportunity to turn things back into their favor. Youngju has completed the Crucible now, and that's really been the downfall of Ace in the past couple fights, is they've been locked up by the Fearsome Shade, they've been locked up by the Holy Nova. We don't have a Reflex Block on Creation or Tassa, so this Crucible is absolutely key to Ace and if they are going to be able to pull out a victory here. Master's going to try and get the tree end, and we'll have to watch that Crucible. We'll have to be aware because it... Oh, that's not when you want to use it. And now Ace Gaming realize they have to get the hell out of here because otherwise they're going to get caught out. The wait for it comes out, looking for creation of Fearsome Shade as well, but no capitalization from Pain. They're just trying to force Ace back. Muster stepping forward now, tries to get onto Tassa, down to about half HP, but Ace can just wait for the Crystal Sentry here. The tree end will go across towards Pain. That Crucible back up in 26 seconds. We will have to see if Ace are able to slow this game down. The Holy Nova is going to connect, but it's only on to Youngju, the stun coming out as well from the ordained creation in that front line. He's getting chunked out as well. Just we know Ferra doing a lot of work. Has the intervention if he needs it, has the fountain as well for that healing. And once again, Ace just have to get away. Yeah, Jasmine Ferro did use the fountain to save himself at the end of that fight, but he does still have that divine intervention, as you mentioned. And pain gaming, incredibly impressive. And we we're just talking about the crucible. 
Creation's coming in for a flank here. Youngju was very low. Here comes just Sweeno Ferrer as well. Trying to get the intervention down onto Falcon Dorian. The Crucible used early once again. We'll have to see if this fight continues to erupt the Ordain onto Tassa. There's the fountain in response. Ace Gaming try to stay alive using that Crystal Sentry if they can. But Mustard doesn't give a damn as he jumps in towards that back line. And now Pain Gaming are in a 3v2 situation. Creation's gonna jump in though, trying to get the steals. Can he get these two kills at the end? Look at how low both these teams are. Falcon Dorian waiting. He's got the fearsome shade. He pops it out and he will force away creation and young Jew a one-for-one -one trade in the jungle that was such a crazy long fight you know it was really two engages that kind of just flowed together into one uh you know as we were mentioning that crucible accidentally got popped by young Jew, and pain gaming immediately turned their attention they they capitalized immediately on that mistake they weren't able to find a whole lot but they end up finding one kill they give up a kill in return but that's as far as it goes. Neither team really loses out on too much here. And now we're just going to be getting back into uh, a couple rotations looking for that next fight. Tassa still sitting on just the uh, Dragon's Eye for his uh, Tier 3s. He's just now picked up the Clockwork because he had a chance to shop. And the uh, Shatter Glass is complete for Falcon Dorian, but does not have the Echo, does not have the, uh, the Clockwork. So the timing on his abilities is still a little bit rough at this point. He's tried to compensate a little bit. There's a little bit of additional cooldown in that Crystal Infusion. He's just picked up level 9, whereas Tassas is now running out that level 8 Infusion. And 10 and 10 on Muster and Creation. The Sweeno Ferrer goes in with the Holy Nova. Tassa down so low. There's the corner, but it's blocked out. Wait for it isn't going to quite connect. Tassa's still alive. Muster low as well, but he's jumping in. He's trying to get on towards that Samu. He cannot quite take the kill, but the Oblivion comes down as well. There's the Fountain. Is that too late? No, it's not, because Creation's still alive. Muster's dead. Just Sweeno Ferrer. And it's Falcon Dorian trying to get the kills in response here. They get a one for one trade thus far. Tassa trying to run away. They're turning their attentions across towards Youngju. That Arden should be able to get away. Once again, it's the Vox and the Black Feather that fall, and we'll have to continue to keep our eyes on Muster because if he can keep alive, if he can survive for a couple more seconds in one of these fights, if Jusweena Feather gets that echo and gets a double intervention off, that's where Pain Gaming are really going to come online in these skirmishes. Yeah, and one of the decent advantages I would say the Vox has here is he's very likely just going to go right into a Metal Jacket and try to cut down that damage that Creation's able to do. Um, now, he does have the Piercing Spear. He's probably going to go into that Bone Saw. But again, you know, trying to live long enough on this Vox is key for their success. Creation, however, he's probably not going into a Metal Jacket. He's very likely going into an Atlas Pauldron so that when he can get to that back line, he can try to slow up the Vox's attack speed. If it gets blocked, however, though, the base stats of that Atlas Pauldron are much lower than the Metal Jacket, so the damage trade-out at that point should go in favor of Sir Muster. I totally agree with you, and I, I think just looking at these fights, it's almost astounding, almost unrealistic to see just how well Pain Gaming are playing in this series. Like, everyone expected them to roll over. Everyone expected an Ace Gaming 3-0, and, oh, and now Pain are saying, oh, no, you don't. We're, we're here. We're here to fight. We're here to represent our region and go back to Brazil with that Vainglory trophy as well, and they're well on their way towards it. They have started up the gold miner. A flank opportunity is here for Ace, trying to cut him in from two sides, but Jusuino Ferrer is having none of that. He goes forward with the Holy Nova, has the Echo for a double intervention if he needs it. He can pray to the gods of the Halcyon Fold, but they're going to engage onto Tassa instead. Muster versus Tassa, that's the big trade. The immense gold payout goes over to Payne, and now the fight has truly begun in the jungle. The engage from Muster on towards Tassa, but Tassa's still alive. Creating jumped in and he's been untouched because Muster's trying to take out the Samuel. Can he get him in the end? Just about diving in. Can't quite get the kill. And it ends up being a two for nil trade in favor of Ace. Yeah, that's a great turnaround for Ace. Fortunately for Payne, they were able to get that uh, gold mine down. And I'm actually surprised that Ace Gaming was able to come through on that fight. As you, you know, you talked kind of that pincer maneuver that came in. I thought they were just going to collapse heavily onto Samuel. We'll get into the replay here. So that gold mine's taken. They have such a clear opportunity to just chase down Samuel. There's not enough speed. And it, it just, they spent too much time with their damage split up. It allowed Creation to go ahead and uh, build up a couple stacks there on to Jesuino Farah. They turned their attention over to Sir Muster. It was very, very close. He did almost pick up that kill on Tassa. In fact, the minion almost killed Tassa as well, but he makes it out alive. He gets to recall, tops his health off. He'll be good to go. 
And how important was it that Shiswinofo was the first to fall? Still has the intervention, still had the echo, wasn't able to get any of those massive, impactful abilities off in the fight. Great stuff from creation, you have to say, to focus down that target. He had the opportunity. Once again, we enter a little bit of a stalemate in this game. Basically, no gold in it. There's a thousand gold lead for Pain Gaming, but that doesn't matter a jot at this moment. Creation now finished triple weapon item and a metal jacket to try and keep himself alive against Muster. Muster's sitting on the double weapon item and the coat of plates. Hasn't really been able to get towards that metal jacket yet. Here comes the Oblivion, blocked out. Pain, willing to continue this trade because they know Muster's getting the stacks. He's at 10. The wound's coming out. The damage onto Youngju as well. Creation and Tassa force back. Youngju's gonna put down the gauntlet. They're looking for Shisui Nofera. There's the fountain as well. But Ace Gaming are on the back foot. They're having to run for the wins. They're having to get back behind their turret because Pain Gaming are not giving up. Just we know Ferris low has the intervention, has a fountain left as well, and Pain Gaming can just back away. Will they look for the turret or will they count this as a win? I think they want a little bit more. They're going for the tree and trying to get the healing back onto Master Tassa. Takes a massive chunk of damage with the Mad Mojo across the wall. Can't quite get the kill, but Master isn't giving up yet. He wants that. He takes down the Samuel. He sends him back to the sanctuary. And now Pain Gaming are diving between the turrets. They do not care that you are the Korean champions. They do not care that you are the favorites for the tournament. They do not care at all. They take the ace and ace get wrecked by Pain Gaming. Yeah, I hear some excited fans down there in the stage. Pain has really stepped things up in this beginning of this replay. It was a crazy one. Again, another really long drawn out fight. They turn their attention down to this Crystal Sentry. They clean it up in a beautiful bad mojo over the wall. Connects on the Tessa, 751 damage. And Sir Muster comes in, cleans things up. Beautiful stun onto Creation. No Rose Offensive to get him out. Uh, and, you know, one, two, three, line him up. And it's the Pain confidence. takes him down. It's the confidence from Pain to do that as well. You get demolished in game one, you get perfect gamed, and then you say, nah, we're just gonna die between your turrets. Muster's just, just gonna run through your entire team and get to the back line. They get the ace, they get the Kraken, they haven't broken that choke point turret yet, though, so they have three turrets to try and get through if they're gonna try and close out the game. They did it last game. Yeah. So very well within the realm of uh, possibility here. Boots are used by Falcon Dorian. Can we see this fight? Can we see Pain end the game here? Those offensive away. The Drifting Dart's gonna come out as well. And Pain take a step back. They take a breath. They take a moment to reevaluate this fight because the Kraken's coming in. Pain Gaming want this. The Oblivion blocked out, but Musu is quite low. The jump in. There goes the Ordain. Blocked out from the sun. The Fist and Shade as well will be removed by Ace. They're going to get back towards the Sanctuary. They're going to heal up. That Kraken's down to about half. It's all on Musu. It's all on these breaking points. It's all on Pain as they look to take a 2-1 lead over Ace Gaming. The Brazilian pride of the South American region are fighting against the Korean champions at the moment and they are doing a lot of work. They've taken down one, they're looking for more. Creation's trying to dive up towards the top side but the Kraken is there on the crystal now. It's all on pain and they should close this one out. They're gonna take a 2-1 lead and they are one game away from the semi-finals. Yeah, they absolutely are. And we've gotta be thankful to have Iraqi and Munchables on the desk cheering for Pain Gaming here. We love you, Bacon. We love you, Sui. But you need to get on this uh, Brazilian hype train Gotta that's get on going the pain on here. hype train, my man. Brazil coming up massive in that game against the reigning Korean champions. And you can see just how much it means to them as well. Such elation on the stage. They know they are within just one game of getting the furthest Brazil have ever got at a world championship. Yeah, they didn't make it very far last time around. They were that dominant team in their region. They fell a little bit short in the international competition. They've really kicked things into high gear. They've really turned things around. This is Ace Gaming again, the team that was really the favorite for most coming into this tournament. Them and Cloud9 are the favorites. Cloud9 still survived, but Ace Gaming one game away from being knocked out of the World Championship. So we're gonna hand it back across towards our victors, Monch and Arakizo, and our losers, Sweet J and Tasty Bacon. Guys, take it away. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. It is 2-1 right now in favor of South America, in favor of Pain Gaming. They have come up and they are showing us what this region is all about. I was coming into the series saying that the player to watch should be Creation. I think it should have been Sir Muster. His counterpart is doing absolute wonders in this series right I now. I mean, you have to get on the Pain train with us right here. I mean, this team is showing up huge. 
the disrespect came off from Ace Gaming throughout the first two games. They won the first one, lost the second one. This time around, they actually went back to what works for them. They went for the Samuel, sieging turrets, and trying to play around the objective game. Even that did not work, though. I mean, Pay Gaming just showing up huge right here. And what an incredible performance. With these two wins, I want to take a moment and remind everyone, Ace Gaming 2-0 yep. over Team Solo Mid. Pain now has two victories over Ace Gaming. This is unheard of. I am speechless. Could this be the better America? <laughs> That's, I'm just gonna leave that one. I'm just gonna leave that one alone now. I mean, let's get into some There's analysis still from this game. still nine that are gonna have words about that one, but <laughs> this is incredible. Day, let's get on into some of the analysis on this one. We do have a replay from in this game. And this was Pain Gaming showing what they are made of. Some of the team fighting out of this team has been absolutely exceptional, Suija. Yeah, for sure. And Sir Muster, I mean, he not, he not only ahead of CS, he was so aggressive and his wow. uh, team just supported. Look at the grace and the the stun coming out here to secure the Black Feather. And Youngju is making is, is being indecisive here. He's like, should I help? Should I leave? And this gives them the ace. They get the extra turrets from there and then they snowball. But you can see how strong Vox and Grace are together. Ace needs to respond to this. Just the way that Pain responded to their, their Kestrel, they have to not give this Grace composition over to Pain Gaming. The biggest thing about that was something that wasn't shown in the replay. Moments before, the control of Jasmino Farah to not use any of the utility. He was down to a sliver of health and held onto the fountain held onto the Divine Interventions so that when they made that dive play, he could keep his teammates alive. Absolutely. Now we can take a look at the damage that was done during that game as well. And I'm pretty sure that Sir Muster may well be topping the table. <laughs> Obviously there was a Samuel there, so Tassa will likely be up towards the top when it comes to actual damage done. But Falcon Dorian actually doing a good job. But I mean, that's the kind of situation when you have two Voxers on the squad. I think this is going to be a lot of damage for <laughs> I mean, the cr uh, creation, as you can see, his damage on the Blackfeather is fairly lacking. And that's actually because, as we talked about it, Blackfeather weapon power doesn't do very well against the Vox and the Batiste. And the Grace, I mean, it's just a composition that can deal with the diving Blackfeather very, very well in terms of how they can kite and just focus him down. So creation not having the best of the uh, of, of the games he's ever had. I was so surprised, even last game with Glaive and now with Blackfeather, no poison shift. You need to build poison shift to counter Grace's heal, right? And I feel like not building a poison shift is going to work against you. So my big question now, as we head towards the next draft in this series, is do we have to take away the Vox from Pain Gaming? Because Samusta is they first an absolute it. monster on this Vox. Yeah, they first right. picked the Vox. This is one of the teams that or one of the only teams that has done that, uh, done the first pick Vox so far, the other team being C9, and C9 in the past excelled around picking their carries, his strongest pick as a first pick. They didn't care about what's strong in the meta. They didn't care about the counter picks that can come out. I mean, Vox is a really safe laner as well. You can't really counter pick him. So Pain Gaming, if they're allowed, I don't see a reason for why they should switch their strategies at this point. And game one, ace first ban, Vox. So you won game one, why are you switching up your draft? So I feel like they need to go back to that, just take away the Vox, and then I think they have a much better chance, because Sir Muster and Vox is just unstoppable. For me, it's not so much about the Vox. The more important pick for me in this upcoming game is the Kestrel. I think Ace need to first pick this Kestrel, because every single time that they have not taken the Kestrel, they, they focus on the captains. There are plenty of strong top-tier captains available. Take the Kestrel so that Pain cannot ban it away from you because that has been the single strongest pick for Ace Gaming thus far at Worlds. All right, I do want to ask one question just to kind of play devil's advocate here. Earlier on in this series, there were some kind of accusations that maybe Ace wasn't drafting as seriously as they needed to. Do we feel like that's still the case or is this Pain Gaming absolutely showing up to the series? That last game, I don't think so. I mean, they, they played what they would be strong playing that as I mentioned going back to the sieging composition with the Samuel trying to play around the objectives that what that is what Ace Gaming excels at they try to pull it off but perhaps playing it against the Vox is not something that they can do just because Sir Muster is an incredible player on it so if they ban the Vox then play something that works for them traditionally perhaps they can come back and start winning games in this series all right well yeah. we are jumping on into game number four of this series now it's time 
to crack on with our draft and see whether Ace Gaming can come. I, I never thought I was going to say that sentence. Can Ace Gaming come back into the series? Can <laughs> they even this one up and if push it to five they games? Box. There we go. They're going to win this game now. I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope that Bay Gaming have something else other than Vox. So far, it didn't seem like it, but I mean, you can't be just a one-trick Vox. Right, take the Kestro now, and then basically you can flex it CP or weapon, <laughs> but take the Kestro like Iraqi said, but they're going to go with the Black Feather instead. Wow, oh, thanks for <laughs> thanks for miscrediting that one there. Oh, that was you? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, though, Black Feather is still a very, very strong pick, especially in that first pick. Yeah, definitely still a very powerful pick. But it now offers the opportunity for Pain Gaming to ensure that Kestrel does not go over to Ace. I definitely expect that to be their next ban if they don't decide to maybe give it a whirl themselves. But we'll see where they do decide to go without having the Vox available to them. This suddenly now becomes very different. We have to see if they have an answer. So what's also open right now is the Lyra and the Arden. Pain Gaming, uh, they played right Lyra in the past, they played Arden in the past, so they're going to decide to go with the Arden. I wouldn't be surprised if they banned the Lyra right here. No, going back yeah, with the Kestrel. The I Kestrel. agree with that. You I absolutely do agree. I mean, through. Ace Gaming are looking not the best without that Kestrel. And we have to remember, the winner of this series is going to go on to play against Impunity. Ace Gaming, if they manage to get through, there's a lot of cracks in their shield. Absolutely. absolutely. Very much vulnerabilities being exposed here by yeah. Pain Gaming. And there we go. Batiste going to be banned away. That's another one of the picks that Pain has been playing so well. So smart draft by Ace Gaming thus far with the bans to take away what has been working. This draft right here is an example of why I love Best of Five because the further into this series we go, the less this is about 2.10 meta and the more this is uh -huh. about what has yep. been successful in this series, what has it been that Pain have been winning with and what has it been that Ace have been struggling to defeat. I mean, what's open right now is also the Rona. It works very well <laughs> against the Black Feather um, and it's a very strong 2.10 pick, works well like, with the Arden as well. So they can either go for it or decide to go with something that's a little bit more flexible to play into to the B side advantage. This is also the sky being picked up now because I was going to say, you know, if you don't take the Rona, you then worry about maybe Ace Gaming pick it up themselves and run Rona with a Black Feather. But by taking the sky, that makes the Rona far less appealing for Ace. Yeah, so with sky being picked up, Rona is very uh, risky at this point. So I'm wondering if they're going to pick up potentially maybe a Celeste and run the Weapon Black Feather in the jungle here because hmm. playing a Weapon Black Feather into a Sky could be a little risky, but it could work depending on what type of support. So if they pick like a Grace Captain, I think that would be pretty strong because Black Feather would be very hard to kill. I was but they're going with Baron instead. Wow. And I was going to say the Baron and the Lyra are still open. This plays perfectly back into their strengths. Ace Gaming seems to be a lot more serious in this draft for sure. Um, and with the Baron, the CP, Black Feather, and the Lyra, this is a composition that can siege very well later on in the mid game, as well as just play to the range advantage, kiting away once Kai tries to, uh, to dive onto the Baron. Yeah, there yeah. is still potential for Pain to find counters here, take something else that can go onto the Baron, because if they just target down one of these two heroes, dive onto them, and make sure that they cannot get away, they can still find ways to pick up victories in team fights and prevent themselves from getting punished. Yeah, and those picks would be Reza, Taka, Kashka. You need an assassin. You need someone that can get onto that Baron because that's what counters Baron. A melee hero that can get onto him, do yeah. a lot of burst damage, force him to disengage and play defensive versus playing offensive and allow the weapon power sky to then also jump on the Baron. So let's see if those three picks will come out here. Uh, for pain and play CP jungle and a weapon sky lane. You also just need that mobility so that you can chase onto either the Black Feather or the Baron. And it is going to be Taka coming through for pain Ooh. gaming. I love this draft they have put together by both sides, really. These are two incredible drafts, and it is going to be an amazing matchup. Yeah, this is going to be one heck of a game to watch. Tassa going to be playing. Oh, sorry, no, this Pain Gaming going to be locking in that Taka in the end. That is a pick that we don't see all too often. It's a very specific pick. It's something that you pick into certain scenarios. Is it going to work in this game, though? Is it going to be enough to shut down this Baron? I mean, honestly, as long as they get to mid game without uh, Taka falling too far behind a Black Feather, Baron doesn't have too many peeling uh, tools on the side of Ace Gaming. The only thing he has is the Bulwark and the Sigil from Lyra. Blackfoot doesn't provide anything. So if Taka gets on top of the Baron with the Mortal Wound that comes out from the Extractor as well, he can easily take him down with Sky following up with the damage. And not only that, but you say if he can get to the mid game, 
he has all the tools set up to get to the mid game with an advantage because Black Feather's clear speed is not that great. Whereas Taka, with the extra movement speed he gets from his heroic perk, can clear through the jungle very, very quickly and get onto the enemy side and try and start stealing camps away. I think Payne has a very strong mid game. Taka level six is going to put so much pressure onto the lane against Baron. But however, late game Lyra, the amount of healer yeah. she's going to give. Mm -hmm. That's going to counter the burst damage from Taka and allow Baron to survive long enough to do a lot of damage. And then with CP Blackfeather too, he scales really well into the late game. And Tasa is amazing on CP Blackfeather. So let's hope I'm right with this time with this prediction. I'm going to go with AC Gaming. All right. Well, before we jump on into the predictions, we are just solving a couple of quick little technical hiccups on the stage. So we should be with the game very shortly. Guys. If we do, oh, in fact, I believe the game is actually ready. The hiccups have already been solved. So very quickly, I want to ask for your predictions. You've already said Ace Gaming coming this one through? Yes. Tasty Bacon. I'm jumping on the bandwagon. Let's go with the pain train. <laughs> this time around, I'm going to go with Ace Gaming just because this is a strategy. They've played a lot of an EA. Just protect okay. the Barons, scale to the late game, then play around him. All right, we'll see if that can come to pass. It's time to pass it over to our casters once again. Medic and Denomine, please take away game four of this quarterfinal. Thank you very much, Munch. And what a game it's likely to be. I just want to say, Iraqi Zoro, you disappoint me. You flip flopper on the desk. Could have just stuck with the pain train, you never know. Probably going to take this one at three and one. It's an exciting game. We've got a Taka in it. That always makes me happy. Yeah, I, I might actually lean a little bit towards Iraqi Zoro's decision on this one. I, I think. The draft that Ace have put together here is incredibly strong. I don't the, think the crowd agrees with you, do I, I, That's fine. Crowd That's fine. All aboard that Maybe the crowd will prove me wrong. Maybe Payne will prove me wrong and take 3-1 over Ace and eliminate East Asia from the Vainglory Worlds in both the you know group stages and the quarterfinals, respectively, for Rox and Ace. It would be incredible if East Asia, the reigning world champions, were eliminated in this quarterfinal stage. And if Brazil could get all the way to the semifinals, we're gonna find out if that's gonna be the case. It's two and one in favor of Payne Gaming. And we are on to the Halcyon fold. Yeah, I'd love to see Payne come through big here again. They did come to Worlds last year, weren't able to find a whole lot of success, but man, have they made a name for themselves this time around. Obviously last year it was other than Red Cannons. Now, Pain Gaming, and they're bringing the pain consistently against Ace here. Starting up the Elder Trient early on as well, forcing Young Ju off, and you can hear the Singaporean crowd have already seen Impunity have an upset earlier on. They want another one. They want Pain Gaming to take this 3 and 1, and what an upset it would be. There's almost an air of tension on the Halcyon fold, almost this sort of this fog of disbelief that has come over a lot of us seeing ace gaming fall so far behind pain in the first three games of this series yeah absolutely and i think i think pain do have a reasonable draft it's just a little bit hard to execute on specifically looking at the fact that it's a taka and an arden into this lyra when lyra can make it very difficult for all three heroes on Pain Gaming, you can restrict the movement that the Sky has. You can res you can actually block out the abilities that Taka has, as well as the Gauntlet coming out of Arden, that Bright Bulwark, so useful at stopping that uh, additional momentum. And that can provide a lot of time for this Black Feather and Baron to ramp up their damage. A lot of bursts. If Pain Gaming can survive through it, they might be able to shut them down. Pain Gaming looking to survive through the Ace Gaming onslaught. We have seen them fall very rapidly before, but the last two games have been absolutely indomitable stuff from them. It's interesting to see the way that Ace Gaming's attitude has changed throughout the series as well. Up until this game, they were very jocular, they were laughing before picks and bans, they were laughing after the games as well, but you could see how serious they were coming into this matchup. Tass is going to push forward a little bit here as Falcon Dorian's going to find him out. That Black Feather needs to get away. He doesn't have the Rose Offensive and Falcon Dorian's putting a lot of damage down, waiting for the next kite and it's up in a second. Tassa trying to get his way away to get the shield from the on point, but here comes the Vanguard, the healing with the Imperial Sigil will be able to keep him alive for the time being. But that is a statement of intent from Falcon Dorian. Hasn't been the biggest impact in the first three games. This game, he wants to put his mark on Worlds. 
Yeah, the past couple of games were definitely all about the uh, the muster train there. I mean, that Vox and Grace combination, he literally just took control of every single fight. His ability to get in and out and stick away or just keep a little bit away from the damage. And then once those breaking point stacks ramped up, turned around. But now, muster, they're looking for another Triant. They're looking for another edge here over Ace Gaming. And they get it as well. We always talk about the rotations from the East Asian teams. We always said Ace are great at objectives. They're great at macro play. Well, it's Pain who are getting the early objectives. It's Pain who are taking these incremental advantages. Still pretty even in this game, but that is a good sign if you're a Brazilian fan with the rest of the matchup yet to come. And we've talked a lot about Ace looking, you know, for this burst composition, this heavy damage from the Baron and from the Blackfeather. What is it exactly that Payne are going to be trying to do in this early game to overcome that damage from Ace? Well, because Pain Gaming's composition relies so much on their movement, uh, you know, the Taka wanting to get in and out of the fight, the Sky wanting to dance around the edge, it's going to be all about trying to bait out that Bright Bulwark from Youngju. And then once that ability is used, you wait for it to drop, try to make a good engage. You know, we'll see some more treads later on. And that's where they're going to see those windows of opportunity because the cooldown time on that Bulwark is pretty long in comparison to some of the other abilities that are ready to go. We'll have to wait and see exactly how Youngju uses the Bulwark. He had a bit of an itchy trigger finger in Game 2, uh, Game 3 with those Crucibles. We saw a couple of them mistimed by him. And now he is the be-all and end-all, you feel, for some of these Ace Gaming team fights. Very cagey early on here. Both teams sensing the gravity of the occasion. And Pain Gaming are the ones to go aggressive, but they will be forced back. Those Porcupine Mortars have a bit of a sting in the tail. Creation doing a lot of work on this Baron. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like Falcon Dorian might be looking to rotate down here instead. He's going to find some damage on the Young Jew. Nothing major, but, you know, just kind of being a nuisance like a Taka should be, right? So, uh, Ace, they are going to be able to go ahead and get their backs together, both Creation and Tassa. So, again, trying to get this Baron to the late game, trying to get him to that point that he can be the hyper carry that we once knew him to be. But if, if Pain are able to take an advantage early, if they're able to find a fight or a first objective, as long as they're not losing the early game to Baron, then there's definitely an opportunity through the mid game where this Taka is going to spike at level eight that they can really start to have their, their fun. And a lot of fun they seem to be having. Such elation on their faces after game three. Aftershock finished onto Falcon Dorian now. We've got the Fountain on Jusuino Ferrer as well. That is answered by Youngju. There's an Aftershock on Tassa. Basically identical get builds across the board. Pain are going to force Ace away from this turret. The X-Retsu in. Looking for the damage down on towards that Lima. But Falcon Dorian takes about half his HP in return. It's interesting the target selection in these fights. Do you take out the Lyra to get rid of that healing? Do you try and get rid of the Black Feather or the Baron early on to reduce the extra damage in the fight? At the moment, they're going for Tassa. X Retsu, there's the first blood. Pain Gaming, unstoppable at the moment. They could look for even a little bit more here. It's creation and Youngju on that Imperial Sigil. You can see Falcon Dorian. He's dancing, he's thinking, he's wondering can I go in once again? Can I X Retsu and cause one of these ace members to die? But they can't quite find the engage they want. Yeah, the respawn timer's still pretty low. It would have been probably pretty risky. If you overcommit, take a couple turret shots, all of a sudden Blackfeather, who's a very quick hero, thanks to the uh, several gap closures, the faint of heart, uh, the on point is actually, gives you that slow as well. Then you've got the Rose offensive charges, you know, it just, it might be a little too risky. Your turret's already low, giving up a kill could really swing the favor over to this Baron. And again, it's all about keeping this Baron down as long as you possibly can. Have to see if Payne are able to do that. A slight advantage for them. Coming up towards the seven minute mark, they are about 700 gold ahead. A little bit of chip damage onto the turret, but Ace have done a lot more DPS onto the turret of their own. So if they can find a good push, maybe with a minion candy, we've seen them do it before. Or maybe they just wait out this game. They say, we don't mind getting later on. We don't mind it if you take a turret, take a kill here or there, as long as you don't get an insurmountable lead. We will come back in the late game and we will hit you with an iron fist and a mortar from creation. There's the iron cannon to clear out the wave as well. They are just trying to delay this game. 
Yeah, definitely. And Sir Monster looking to rotate down to the shop. He wants to pick up that Poison Shiv, which is going to be his next Tier 3 item. And it's important because it needs to shut down some of that healing that comes out of Lyra. Not only does Lyra have the Fountain, as all Captains you know, will eventually have at some point, she also gets that healing from her Imperial Sigil that scales with bonus health. And we see that Dragon Heart as well as the Fountain in inventory. So cutting down the usefulness of that Lyra could be the difference maker. It looks like Pain are trying to draw a fight in. They go in with the gauntlet and already they've taken out the Baron. That's a good way to shut him down. They're looking for a little bit more as they chase into the jungle of Ace. But they realize a kill and a gold miner, if they can secure it, or a kill and a turret is exactly what they want. They were stood on a scout trap, perhaps hoping the Ace would overextend, looking to try and stop up this gold mine. But Plowken Dorian is a little bit on his own here. Can't get over eager, Mr. Falcon, if you want to win out this fight. Doing a great job of dodging around, getting the mortal wounds down onto the Black Feather as well, but he takes a massive chunk in response. The turret's gonna go down. Good distraction from Pain Gaming. They get a turret and they lose only one kill. Didn't get the gold mine there, but still a good trade for them. Now they need to get out. Monster doesn't really want to. He goes in with a Suri strike, but forced back by Ace. Yeah, that was really perfectly played by Dorian, actually. As you mentioned, it was a great distraction. Meanwhile, we got another fight breaking out. Fights continue to erupt. Muster trying to keep himself alive, but Ace were able to take him down, and now they can look for a turret off their own off this push. Falcon Dorian's running up the lane, but it looks like Ace are going to decide against the turret and go down towards their jungle yeah. instead. Yeah, definitely going to take an opportunity to get through the jungle, get an opportunity to shop. This Baron's only sitting on two items right now, and by the time they clear out this gold here in the back, he's going to be sitting over 1,400 gold, and that's a lot of gold to be sitting in your pocket. That does not help you if a fight were to break out, so he'll likely be looking for another lucky strike, that tier two crit. There it is right there, as well as Tassa. He's got a bit of gold in his pocket. It looks like he's going towards that broken myth for the second item, and that's going to give him that additional pierce and make the on point just all that more threat. Just we know Fera has been flashing those charms uh, since game two. And it's <laughs> <laughs> rightfully so. Yeah, it seems to be working for them. They've won every game he's done it in, so maybe it's their lucky charm. Pain Gaming still sitting very even in this game, but I wonder if perhaps that window is closing on them. We talked about the power spike they have with the overdrive Titan. There comes the gauntlet as well. Falcon Dorian jumps in with the extra red but Muster is quite low. Vanguard going down, Falcon Dorian takes a chunk in response. Ace Gaming starting to win out some of these trades. You have a Baron sitting at two and a half items. You've got Tassa there as well with the Aftershock and with the coat of plates for a little bit more tankiness into this Pain Gaming lineup. Yeah, Tassa trying to get some of those on points to land on the Sir Muster. Hasn't been able to get uh, too many of them yet, but he's definitely looking. Searching. Trying to find an avenue of invention, an avenue to go in. The extra suit, there's the fountain. It was actually the Kitan, sorry. It's Falcon Dorian. Did get chunked out, but the fountain heals him back up. Now it's Jusuino Ferrer. He has a blinking health bar as he's down to about 1,200 HP. There's still a fountain available for Youngju as well. We've seen Ace dive turrets before, and it hasn't worked out for them. That's how Pain Gaming started to win the last game, but instead, Ace just decided to get the objective. They take down the turret, and with it, they have an ever so tiny gold lead. Whoa, that was a crit. Muster needs to get away. Get the hell out of there, Muster, because otherwise Ace are going to chase you in. There's the Arcane Passage. Has Youngju overextended because the healing triad is on Muster. Takes the passage back. Youngju trying to heal himself back up with the sigil and will have just enough. This game is on a knife edge, Denomine. And bit by bit, Ace are sharpening their swords. They're getting these items. They're building up creation. And it can only be a matter of time. Three items now on creation. Double Tyrants and the Sorrow Blade. Yeah, Sir Muster, you know, with the healing flask that he was able to use, as well as picking up that Treant, they were able to heal him back up to full. He didn't hit the back. He only made it out on a sliver of health, you know, almost by luck. But they are able to make it on out. Falcadorian has the Aftershock and the Clockwork complete, so he'll be able to get around the fight a little bit easier. His cooldowns are going to come up a little bit quicker. And in that case, because your abilities are coming up quicker, you're able to get that Aftershock proc off a little bit more frequently in these fights as well giving you a bit more damage. It seems very important that Ace Gaming are able to track that attacker. 
Flares have just been picked up by Youngju to try and catch him out in the fight. There's the gauntlet. They go in for the re-engage. The bright ball, what comes down. The stealth. But look at the damage on towards Falcon Dorian. Doesn't really have a lot of armor yet. Just sitting on the light armor. No code of plates for him. And another crit coming out. There's the first kill. x who goes down. But already the double for creation. And this is exactly what Ace wanted. Pain get destroyed. And Ace get three kills for their own. Yeah, they do. They're up five to two. Pretty slow game as far as the kills go. We're only 12 and a half minutes in, but it's looking to be a gold miner for Ace. It's looking to be that second turret for Ace. Let's get into that replay because this one's a fun one to watch. The Baron damage is coming through so strong here. 542 damage, 542 damage. Taka is so low. And then watch as Sir Muster is looking to escape. That splash damage from the second shot actually gets down on Falcon Dorian as well. And then it's only a matter of time. The, the rocket launcher from this Baron with the Sorrow Blade double monocle build is just so devastating if you group up that way. It's the power of the jump jets as well, getting those two auto attacks off incredibly quickly after you use that ability. And now we start to see Ace really coming into their own this game. You have to remember how important this game is for them. If they lose it, they are out of the world championships. And what a state of affairs that would be for the East Asian region to have everyone eliminated before we even get to the semi-finals. One of the favorites for the tournament now showing us just how try hard they can be, just how devastating they can be if they get their hands on a game. Yeah, Creation's already gone into the journey boots, so he knows that the enemy has that mobility. And because of, oh, hold on here. Oh. Used. Iron Cannon as well. I think Pain have realized that if they miss with that gauntlet, they do just have to back away because otherwise they are running straight into the brick wall of creation. Yeah, you know, just to touch on those journey boots, when you do damage an enemy, that will refresh the cooldown down from 60 seconds to 12. So for a Baron who wants to get away from this Taka, wants to get away from the sky, it is a useful tool that they can definitely use to their advantage. And beautiful bright bulwark timing there. Just incredible stuff here from Youngju. We said he needed to show up in this game. Has had a few slips in the previous two, and he is looking incredibly strong thus far. Could even be building up towards an Echo for double Bright Bulwarks. That would be incredibly devastating for Pain because they just won't have a way into the fight. They just won't be able to find those paths to victory. Ace Gaming looking so strong thus far in this matchup. And Pain just don't seem to be able to find the key that unlocks the semi-finals. Yeah, not at all. And, you know, looking over at Creation's build, he is still hanging on to this flask, as well as, uh, you know, five members of this game have a flask still in their pocket. I'd expect the next time he uses that will be the time that when he makes it to shop, he'll sell it off. And I'm interested to see, does he go into more damage or does he get some shielding for this Taka? Kind of a uh, little early to tell. I think there's viability for either way. There's not a whole lot he has to worry about blocking as far as crowd control goes, because he can jump jets out of that gauntlet. Triple shot with the auto there. That splash damage doing a lot of work. Pain Gaming seem a little bit desperate as they go in for the engage. Here's the gauntlet. They do get the stun onto the Baron, but do they have health? They do not. Muster's the one to fall first. And now Falcon Dorian's trying to dodge his way around the side of the fight. He wants creation, but he has to kite in across. Back onto Tassa x Retu back in. But half his health just disintegrates in an instant. And Ace will take two kills. Yeah, Ace take two kills. We're 15 minutes in the game as well. 15 and a half minutes. That's really one of the worst times you can lose out on a fight. So shy of a miracle coming out of Jesuina Farah, this should easily be a free cracking going over to Ace Gaming. They only have three turrets between them and a victory. They've been winning the past couple fights very convincingly. And now Creation, he has gone ahead and used that healing blast. So again, this is going to be the time he sells it. I think he just goes into more damage, possibly some piercing. There it is, the piercing spear. And that's going to help deal with the metal jacket complete by Falcon Dorian, as well as the coat of plates that is built here on Sir Muster. And I think Ace Gaming, they're just looking to close this one out on one cracker push. Yeah, not willing to be eliminated quite yet. We're going to go all the way to game five. It feels like Pain Gaming still have something to say about it as they try and defend with the crack and push. But Ace, so close to those completed builds, are looking absolutely dominant in this matchup. Death from above, locking out that choke point. But the Iron Cannon is going to come down and chunk out the turret. The crit's coming out as well. Falcon Dorian 
falling lower and lower. The Kraken hasn't even taken half its health yet as Ace continue to push in. We've seen this story as Payne won the last two games off a Kraken push. Ace trying to do the same here. The X-Retsu used on the Kraken. There's a death from above, but it's not right in the right position. The Gauntlet coming out as well as Payne Gaming try and defend, but the Kraken still pushes in. X-Retsu on the back line. The slow with the Atlas. Can they get on towards this Baron? They're trying to, but Muster just can't muster up the damage and the Baron still survives. X-Retsu jump jets away. Kraken pushing in. You have to feel that this is it for Payne. Ace Gaming should be able to equalize the series. The Kraken pushing in. The Crystal going low. Ace Gaming are going to take us all the way to game five. Yeah, it's been a wild roller coaster here on the Halcyon fold again. This team that I don't think anybody really expected to have it past day one has come through toe to toe with Ace Gaming. I think I uh, recall Bacon mentioning earlier. I think the all the VG Pro rackets are like just toast, right? Yep. I mean, that's zero percent. So, yeah, zero off the, off zero percent community. You have failed us. And uh, better luck next time. Well, we're but... part of the community as well, so we yes, failed. I just, failed. I just failed just very hard as, as well. Yes, else. I did. So but... did I. And we've shown you can't doubt pain. You know, even though they lost game one, it was a perfect game. They bounced back, took two on the trot, and now they're going into game five against Ace Gaming. Yeah, they are, and it's going to be an exciting one. Everything is going to be on the line for these teams. You lose here, your tournament run is over, and with only one team for South America and only one team remaining for East Asia. This is not just about, you know, which one of these teams wins. This is about the pride of each of those regions, who is going to make it further in this tournament and whose career ends, well, this season at least. Hopefully not their entire here. career. Yeah, we not their career. We don't stop people from playing just because <laughs> they lose out in the World Championships. We're going to hand it back across towards the analyst desk, and I'm very excited to see what Iraqi Zoyo has to say because he seems to be getting these predictions on the nose. He certainly does, and right now Ace seem to be back on the nose as well, managing to even up the series to a piece. We are going to game five, ladies and gentlemen. The cliche saying is coming out, we have a series on our hands. It's time <laughs> to break down that game a little bit, gentlemen. Araki Zoro, you predicted this one right. Tell, talk to me about what Ace did here. I mean, unless you're, Ace, oh, unless you're C9 or Tribe, you can play as aggressive as they do in the North American style. It's really hard to beat that of East Asian. The way they play passive and they scale their late game hyper carry in that Baron, it's way too difficult. They know exactly how to play it. And Ace going back to what they know works for them is why they won that match. It feels like there was a different kind of style coming out from Payne. What was it missing in this game that they've had previously? Was it just simply a lack of Vox coming through that seemed to be the crux for them here? It wasn't so much what they were missing, it was what Ace brought to the table this game. Okay. They had so much protection for this Baron. And we talked about the fact that the the Taka and the Sky are both very mobile and able to get onto the Baron. But Lyra was just constantly preventing them from being able to do so with the Bright Bulwarks. The damage that Baron was providing. Anytime he hit a double shot, it just did so much damage to one of those two carries that they could no longer stay committed to a fight. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the terrifying things. When there is a Baron in the game, if you let that Baron start to rock and roll, if you get some items under their belt, they will just take things away from that one. Let's take a look at a replay we have from that game. And obviously, this is Ace Gaming managing to take a comfortable fight away from their opponents. Tweet J, talk me through this one. Yeah, this is where you can see in this game the the Baron double shot and the crit coming out. Talker is really out of the fight. And from there, they have to back off. Lara is poking and healing. They just didn't have a chance. And they're also bunching up, allowing Baron to maximize his AoE damage from those melee attacks from his rockets. And that's where he really scaled. He had a Soul Blade, two monocles. Pain did okay in the early game, but they didn't capitalize on the Taka power spike that they needed to push down turrets. But Ace got the first turret 11 minutes, and then from there, the story was theirs because Lyra, Baron, just scaled. All right, we're jumping straight into game five. We need to get this series tied up with a bow. Pain Gaming, 2-2 <laughs> right now against the Korean favorite, Ace Gaming. This, well, I mean, what a time to be alive. I mean, what a time <laughs> to be watching Vainglory right now. Pain Gaming on the A side. Let's see what they back. Yeah, they got to look towards 
I would expect the Turnwalker or the Lyra or the Lorelei to be their first ban here. One the of those three. Feather, yeah. But they are going to actually go for the Black Feather instead. Not wanting Ace to have that, but obviously Ace need to ban away the Vox so that Pain cannot first pick it. This is a redux of game one. Black Feather was banned first, and Ace immediately banned the Vox. What Pain needs to do differently now is make sure they ban Kestro this time around. Yeah. And the, the last game, they picked Arden first instead of Churnwalker. So will they switch this up and actually pick Churnwalker over the Arden or go with the Arden here or Lyra? I mean, honestly, what they need to figure out is not... I mean, the captain picks, okay, Lyra can work, Arden can work, Churnwalker as well. What they need to figure out is what in place of the Vox are they going to play. I mean, Sir Master go. just has not been as effective on any other hero than the Vox. And Ace Gaming, understanding that, taking it away from him. So they need to figure out in their next couple of picks, what is that hyper carry going to be for them in lane? Well, Turnwalker is definitely a strong start to a draft for sure. We've seen so many teams just focusing on this pick, making sure it does not get through the first phase of bans. But now Ace Gaming, do they consider looking for the Kestrel I was going to say, yeah, I mean... Kestrel is still open. There They're going to go, go for it. Wow. it it's, it's a strong pick. Yes, they won with the Baron last game, but that, that was when they had the Lyra, which they probably don't expect to have since Pain Gaming still has another band. So they're going to go for the Kestrel. They can still flex it, don't yeah. forget. And since they're on B-side, they have the opportunity to I do that. I think a Batiste band would make a lot of sense here. Batiste and Vox are kind of the two strongest compositions or heroes that Pain has shown that they can play really, really well. So I wouldn't be surprised if Ace Gaming go ahead and just takes that Batiste off the, off the map and then it opens up a lot of opportunities for Ace to then build around the Kestrel. They're going to instead take wow, the, the Baron, Baron away. A very interesting ban decision for Ace. And we've talked about the fact that a lot of teams aren't really trying to run the Baron alongside the Churnwalker. And the Batiste being still available. Samuel, Samuel. now taking off this is, Gaming. This is so This smart. is just respect bans across the board. This is no longer meta bans. This is now just, we cannot allow the enemy carry to have these This picks. is also just incredibly smart against Ace because yeah, the composition yeah. that Ace runs is the Kestrel, Samuel, Lyra, the non-stop lane pressure. And so taking Samuel away just breaks up that combo that we've seen Ace <laughs> excel with. You can yeah. see them on the the screen right there holding the pain logo proud this is a team that knows they are representing south america right now they are in game five and they are looking to upset the korean favorite i mean not only is saw okay so i'm gonna bring up saw here it can be a last <laughs> pick into the churn walker but not only that it actually works really well with the churn walker itself so they're looking for a carry that works for them well instead of the vox they need to try something that, ha that they haven't tried in the past. They tried multiple things, didn't work out, saw something they haven't. So, I mean, it would be a really interesting pick, especially against the Kestrel and the Lyra trying to push the early game. Yeah, but if they pick Saw, it's a CP Kestrel, and that's they're going to be outranged. So it's really, really risky. I think here, um, like a Batiste would be good, but they're going to go with Celeste and Cruel instead here. And that's a pretty strong combo if they can chain the stuns together. Chain the stuns together and chain their opponents together. That's the key <laughs> to this composition. But, you know, I, I want to go back to the Saw pick just a little bit to kind of just kind of wrap that one up. Is Saw is a pick that you cannot run it in a game like this unless you have been putting a lot yeah. of practice into it. And so it's not that surprising that they didn't go for it, even though it is a strong combo. So for Ace Gaming now, though, what do they try and do to break up this Celeste? We've seen Celeste today have massive impact in the games that she has appeared in. Pain Gaming going to be looking to replicate that. Honestly, no matter which way Ace Gaming go with at this point, it's going to be a difficult matchup because they already have Kestrel and Lyra. Against the Celeste, you want to dive and pressure that Celeste get on top of her and eliminate her quickly. Kestrel and Lyra, yes, Lyra can teleport, but Kestrel is not the best diving carry as a weapon power in the lane. So another choice that they can do is flex it into the CP and get something such as perhaps the Rona that's still open that can play aggressive and dive onto the Celeste. Well, the point, though, is that Celeste Cruel uh, Churnwalker, I really wow. like that draft for Pain. Yeah, it's going to be a weapon Kestro most likely and a CP Sky because they want to siege the lane. A weapon Kestro is going to win the early and mid game really hard against this composition. However, Celeste is going to scale really well 
into a late game against a weapon Kestrel. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a weapon power Sky and a CP a Kestrel in the jungle. Weapon power Sky works really well against Celeste. You can put a lot of pressure with CP Kestrel rotating up to lane multiple times. You can easily take down turrets. And honestly, the fact that there are differing opinions on which build they're going to go for means that it's difficult to predict for paint mm -hmm. as well coming into this game. They're not going to be 100% right. sure how this build is going to go. The nice thing about, obviously, there is that great flexibility for Ace, but for Pain, it doesn't matter to them which way they go. Their composition works the same either way. All right, well, it's about time that we get on into this one. Final prediction Ooh. of the series, oh. gentlemen. <laughs> Single word answers. I want your predictions. I really love Kestrel. Single word, <laughs> Single word answers. Pain. Pain gaming. Pain gaming. Pain, Pain gaming. gaming. Pain gaming. Oh, boy. We oh, just man. Doomed them. The, the analyst curse. desk. The, the analyst desk curse. is all aboard the pain <laughs> hype train. It's time to get on into this one. Medic and Denominate take us away for game number five. Thank you very much, Munch. Bunch of bandwagoners on this analyst desk. Hey, hey, I'm I'm digging it. I love yeah. the pain draft. You're on the pain hype train as well? I mean, I jumped Choo -choo. on that after game two. We'll have so. to wait. We'll have to wait and see if they're able to take it over Ace, who looked very strong in that last game. You have to say, but the draft is going to play such a monumental role coming into this final game. It definitely will. We've seen Muster have such a massive impact on the Vox, so much so that Ace have banned it away from him every single game thus far. And Celeste is a very different playstyle, but a very powerful pick, especially if you can get her into that mid and late game phase where you overdrive the Heliogenesis, get that additional yeah, range. You can make it very difficult for that Kestrel to have any kind of play in the game. Well, for the Kestrel to have some play, we have to get onto the Halcyon fold. It's game five between Pain, Gaming, and Ace. And I don't think anyone would have pre predicted that we would be here. What an occasion for the Brazilian fans. What an occasion for the fans from Korea as well. They are one game away for making it to the semi-finals. There they are. It looks like we might have a little bit of a skirmish already getting ready to break out here. Both teams are down here at this tree end. Both teams just dancing around it a little bit here as well. The back and fronts are going to get taken. Must have there as well. Falcon Dorian was waiting in the bush. Blocking that heroic perk. The tree end down to about half. Is Youngju going to go for the steel? Imperial Steel just doesn't get it. Pain Gaming. Draw first blood in this game. They secure the tree end. And perhaps that's a good sign of things to come. It's more like a first scratch. Yes, yeah, first scratch. First, first scratch. A little bit of a nick in the armor that Korean teams have built up across the years. I have to remember that it was Rox Gaming who took the title last year. Rox Armada. Rox Armada. Sorry. I've said gaming a lot in the course of these five games, so they caught in my mind. They beat TSM. Both those teams now out of the tournament. We are going to have a new champion this year, and could it be... Pain Gaming, could it be Ace Gaming? We'll just have to wait and see because one team is going to the semifinals and one team is going home. Yeah, I do like both of the drafts here from these teams. Again, I do want to give a little bit of the edge to Pain Gaming as long as Muster can play the Celeste to its fullest. But we saw Tessa already today on this Kestrel. And you know, as we mentioned, it, it's almost like his Kestrel has just a targeting ability. It's not a skill shot. It just, they, they're landing every single time, able to take the positioning, dance around the fights, get those shots past the people who, you know, the captain who would be body blocking it normally. And it, it's just, it's really going to come down to the mechanics and, and who can get better positioning. I think they both have a draft that has advantages over one another. So what are the advantages that Pain Gaming have? Because all the analysts went for them. You're saying you think their draft perhaps is a little bit stronger. What is it that actually makes Pain Gaming's draft so good? There's a lot of protection for this Celeste is kind of the first thing that we got to make note here between the Churnwalker. You know, you've got that uh, AOE stun. You've got the ability to use that Torment and pull enemies away from the Celeste uh, into a more favorable position, even closer so that they can, you know, be hit by those supernovas off the Heliogenesis. And then as Celeste gets to level 8, you overdrive the Heliogenesis you get the additional range, and that makes it very easy to zone out other range targets that you just have additional range over. In this case, both the Celeste and the Kestrel in most, most cases. Pain Gaming able to take the Treant there as well. We'll have to see if Pain are able to keep that arm's reach from Ace, because Tassa has shown us how aggressive he can be throughout the course of this tournament, especially on this Kestrel. The burst that he has, the aggression with the active camos, creation as well, dancing around 
dodging as much as he can with that lock on the extra movement speed the Suri strikes they have a lot of repositioning on the side of ace so there is the opportunity for them to dive on this back line if they can get their tassa waiting in the wings here looking for the glimmers just trying to force pain away from the turret yeah pretty early on in the game though and it's very difficult this early for a kestrel to maintain her energy if she's not maintaining the adrenaline stacks so he's gonna have to back gonna top off some health and uh some energy there gonna go into that shatter glass first i i'm gonna presume you know with the build path he's going that's also what he built last time i'm interested to see if he does go into the clockwork second item again again the energy regeneration is very needed here on this kestrel if you want to be able to keep up those active camos as much as possible and keep up those glimmer shots coming out and that's that's going to be important this kestrel has to have a presence in these fights if she doesn't have energy then it's going to be just a matter of time kroll's going to get onto her uh the, the celeste able to drop those helios and again both of these carries are going to be very low defense, uh, you know, building heroes. You know, the Sky may build both armor and shield, but the Kestrel is very likely just going to go into a reflex block. So if they get caught out in a fight, they are likely to die. You've got the From Hell's Heart. You've got the Core Collapse as well coming out. So you've got the ability to land these stuns. You've got the Trespass. If the Churn Walker can get a few hook and chains down, there is that CC chain. We used to talk a lot about double CC, triple CC compositions. That's what Pain Gaming have here. The ability to lock down multiple members of Ace, but you have to hit those skill shots and you have to catch Ace off guard, which is not something we have often seen throughout this championship. No, and I, you know, as we're talking about stuns, I do want to kind of make note of a little bit of an inter interesting interaction here. There's more reliable stuns on the side of Pain Gaming that Trespass is targeted. You know, the, the From Hell's Heart is a very quick ability. If used at a surprising moment, can be very easy to land versus the Active Camo and the Death From Above are the two crowd control abilities that we have coming out of the side of Ace Gaming. Those are a little bit more difficult to land. They're, they're more uh, zoning potential potential um, coming out of them and there's one shot one kill they're already landing 100% one shot no kills still 100% oh. though <laughs> able to get the damage down creation takes a chunk as well as pain gaming look to pressure on towards the turret so less so good at damaging turrets of course with the helios and the uh, supernovas coming out do need to overdrive that ability first for the extra range two otherwise more levels. two more levels we'll have to wait for muster to hit that spike and both these teams seem willing to wait out this early game you've got the celeste scaling up you've got the kestrel scaling up as well is there a point at which one of these teams is really going to go all out or are we just going to wait for someone to make a mistake i mean if if tassa can just continue to weave these glimmer shots through minions and constantly poke out muster there's a huge opportunity where ace can uh, lower the health bars enough of pain gaming that they can just they have enough pursue right like you can't run from a sky once she's locked on and going the weapon path obviously the sorrow blades first will likely see a, uh, a either a poison shiv or a breaking point for the second item and with that kind of chase with the ability to ramp up damage then sky can be a huge threat and and kestrel doesn't have to be a part of the rest of the fight if 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 tass has done his job and gotten celeste low burned the fountain out there's a real opportunity that creation can come through and just kind of clean up the mess we'll have to see if uh, creation is able to hit those shots later on at the moment tass is still hitting all of those one shot one kills 200% effectiveness <laughs> thus far. <laughs> two out of two from him. But Pain Gaming seems to be shrugging off the damage. And I want to bring up an interesting point about CS here, because it looks like Sir Musto has been given a lot of the farm on the side of Pain Gaming. Falcon Dorian only sitting at 30 farm. Whereas you look at Ace Gaming, they seem to be spreading it out a little bit more. Creation and Tassa sitting a little bit higher. But if you can get that Celeste towards that three item build towards those four items a little bit quicker that's really where pain gaming's composition comes online yeah and we've got the shatter glass and the clockwork online so the helios will pack a huge punch and they're going to come out so much quicker as well as now level eight we are overdriven on those heliogenesis so they have the additional range oh, I missed one. oh no 66.6 percent <laughs> hit rate thus far we'll try and keep track of that as we go through the game death from above clears out the wave there's the from hell's heart they get the stun into the chain cc the trespass is huge and pain gaming 
just go incredibly aggressive in the lane. Surprised to see Creation not block out that first stun. Did have the reflex, did use it, but was just caught out by some great play from Pain. Like I said, it's a fairly quick ability. When you used at close range like that, it can be difficult. There's a lot of things going on. You're looking out for the Heliogenesis that are zoning you out. It's very easy to miss that windup, and that's Pain Gaming taking first turret over Ace in Game 5, using the Celeste to their advantage, and this fight might not be over. No, Tassa continuing to be aggressive. There's the Solar Storm as Mustard realizes he needs to get away. Tassa still sitting on that Shadow Glass. The one-shot, one-kill does connect, but it's an Ace Gaming member who falls. Creation goes down once again. He's died twice, and Falcon is not done. He wants to kill onto Youngju. Mustard chasing in. Joswino Vera is low, and perhaps Pain will realize they perhaps need to disengage. The damage coming out from the Helios on towards Tassa as well. Pain Gaming saw a window of opportunity and they jumped straight through. They defenestrated Ace Gaming. They took those windows out of the wall and they took two kills and a turret on top of it. Yeah, and you know, now that we got a couple seconds of downtime here in this game, that's actually been quite a bit of fighting breaking out. Uh, you know, you're talking about it earlier that they're putting a lot of farm into this Celeste, and it's because the Celeste is going to be that true hyper carry. The Kroll, you know, he has a Sorrow Blade, but the majority of his usefulness is just to be a nuisance. You know, you build up the weakness stacks coming out of your Spectral Smite, you can reduce the uh, outgoing damage of your enemies, as well as, you know, again, the crowd control. Here we go! Another great from Hell's Heart, Falcon Dorian being a pain in the ace here for Pain Gaming, looking for creation and as well, chase the way, the death from above is gonna come out, but Creation now caught in a bad situation, tries to jump forward, the Solar Storm's not quite gonna connect, and Pain unable to find too much more out of that, but Falcon Dorian is absolutely devastating early on this game, looking to take away a Crystal Sentry as well. This is superfluous stuff from Ace, absolutely superb. Yeah, it definitely was. <laughs> That was almost another kill going over to the side of Pain Gaming. The Torment came through just a split second late, almost yanked Creation back into that core collapse. And Pain Gaming, they're looking to be in the driver's seat right now. They're sitting about 2,000 gold up. The Celeste is getting the farm that she needs. She has two, working into three items, has a level 10 infusion ready to go, whereas Creation has just completed his second now, working into the third, picked himself up as an infusion as well. So because he got the chance to shop, kind of on neutral grounds here if they can pick the right fight but again all of the damage for the most part out of pain is going to be relying around the celeste whereas ace uh, ace gaming they have their damage split up fairly evenly but that being said it does require both of them to be on the same target uh to actually come through and get the kill you know we've seen them get pain gaming low but haven't really been able to close out as many kills from Hell's Heart, bounces back, the boomerang coming out from Pain. They're still looking for an engage, blocked out Trespass there. No stun CC chain for them. And now they do need to back away, because here comes the death from above. Just we know Ferret in that front line, has the fountain, pops it. One shot, one kill connects, but Falcon Dorian will tank that. 75% hit rate for Tassa, but he's not finding the kills with these connections, and perhaps Pain can turn it around. Creation's gonna jump into the back line. He's trying to take down some members of Pain. Tassa standing his ground, standing back, but a great core collapse with the stun, getting onto Creation somehow. He gets a double kill, and now it's up to Muster. What can he do? What can he bring out of his bag of tricks? He turns it back to Tassa, but he cannot connect with the core collapse. The sentry's gonna oh. help him out. He almost takes down Creation, but he cannot quite. Remove the Ace Gaming member from the map. Another shot misses. It's a two shot miss, 60%. I might lose track of that pretty soon. My maths doesn't go that well, but the only maths I need to know is it's two and two, and the winner of this game goes through to the semi finals. Yeah, they absolutely do. And Jasmino Farah, great you know, choice in the build here, has picked up the contraption. This will allow him to put more scout traps or flares down, depending on how he wants to use that item, uh, as well as has additional flares in his pocket. And what's useful about this is because we know we're going to have to spout out a Kestrel, if she's undamaged in a fight, you know she's going to go into the active camo, try to reposition. Dropping a flare can be very useful at shutting that advantage that the uh, Kestrel would normally have down. And Oh, that solar storm. I think it was meant to hit creation. It does. He's only on 14 HP, so he's actually chunked out a lot, but the steal comes in from Ace. 
Great stuff from Tassa. Creation almost died trying almost. to stop the turret. That's so unlucky for Muster. Had that third completed item. Thought he could kill Creation, but Creation now picks up an Aegis because he doesn't want that to happen again. Just a sliver. So unfortunate for Pain Gaming. If they would have been able to pick up a kill on the laner there, they likely could have taken down that gold mine and then moved right up into the lane onto that turret. <laughs> Creation. You, uh, you got a little bit lucky there, buddy. Ever <laughs> so slightly, but sometimes a little bit of luck is all you need to win out these games. One shot, one kill. Hits onto Just We Know Fair. Here comes the flank. Jump in with the Arcane Passage, but a great stun straight onto the face of Creation. Here comes the Death from above, and it's not quite going to connect. And Pain Gaming are kiting beautifully thus far this fight, but here comes Tassa. He's not giving up the ghost on this fray just quite yet. The Fountain comes out to heal up Creation, and now Pain Gaming need to decide. Do they move forward or do they move back? That is the choice they will make, both they and Ace call a truce for the time being, but how close are these fights? How close is this game? How tight are the margins of victory? It's a game of inches, it's a game of 14 HP. And both these teams know all it takes is one mistake to lose it, or one outplay to win your spot in the semi-finals. Yeah, and it's just cannot get any closer than this game so far as we see Ace grouping up. We're at that point in the game where the teams are going to stick together at just about all points. You know, you might see a, a, one of the captains, you know, reach out a little bit and try to get some additional vision with their body, but... You know, we'll just have to see what ends up coming through here. Oh, Creation. The stun! Oh, no. It lands! The scout trap! It was enough! They get the kill and Pain Gaming's vision control is huge! We talked about the contraption! That's exactly what it can do! But the answer back from Ace, they're not done! Here comes the Pain! Who's gonna gain in this fight? Creation's still gonna work! Great block though on the trespass! Now it's up to Mustard to try and pull himself back! A superb torment! Just we know Ferris sacrifices himself to keep the Celeste alive! Yeah, unfortunately, that fight broke out without the captain, without Jezuino Farah there. They were able to pick up a beautiful kill very quickly, but at what cost this late in the game, Sir Muster? Gonna make it out, but you are playing with fire right now, sir. Oh, the crack, <laughs> the crack with a beautiful Kraken, body block. Kraken's on the side of Pain Gaming, as are a lot of the fans here, it would seem. Ace, 4-4, four to four, coming into the 16th minute of the game. 300 gold is all that separates these two behemoths of the Halcyon fold. And both these teams have proven their might today. They've proven their worth, but only one of them can take the spot in the semi-finals. Wartreads finish now on towards Youngju, looking for those engages. Pain have been great at getting the disengage, but if Mustard gets caught out, you have to feel perhaps that would be it for Pain Gaming. Yeah, definitely could be, but if they get an opportunity where they can fight as a team, we know they can take down Ace at this stage, and they might be looking for it right now as Jezuino Farah is coming up. If they can find a kill onto Creation, that's going to be the key target they want to find. The Crystal Kestrel shouldn't have enough if, uh, if Sky dies to actually clean up a 2v3 fight. That'll give this Celeste and Kroll an opportunity to bring down the Kraken, and they'll do it quite quickly indeed. Earlier on, we talked about that four-item spike as well from Muster. He's there. Broken Myth, Shatter Glass, Clockwork Eve, Coat of Plates just to back it up with a little bit of armor. But you have to feel that if he survives throughout a fight, he is going to be devastating. Creation, about half an item behind. But he does have the Aegis, so I'm going to give him that. I don't like defensive items, but sometimes you do need to build them, especially since we saw Creation get caught out earlier on. And Pain Gaming are looking to catch him out once again. The damage from the Supernovas is gargantuan, but so is the healing out of those Imperial Sigils. Yeah, it definitely is as Jezuino Farah coming up here into the lane. Both of these captains still level 10, so we don't have any overdrives on the alts for the captains yet. Uh, will be huge, though, to see, uh, you know, once those come out, obviously we'll get some additional cooldowns for these heroes, and it can really change up the way you make your engages. Another one-shot, one-kill going to miss there, but I don't think they're uh, out of the water yet. Pain, they're looking for this opportunity, and with the range that they have out of Celeste, they could definitely find one. You can see Pain just poking into the darkness, saying, are you here? Are you here? Can we catch you? They need that first CC. Maybe Muster oversteps, but no, he's willing just to put the Helios down and step forward towards the face of Ace. No fear, just fight here from Pain. They continue to defy expectations. They continue to challenge the Korean champions and Ace Gaming very much on the ropes in this series. Good connection. It's about 600 damage down onto Muster, but he has the Eve. He can heal that back up if he's left to his own devices. Alongside a healer, Treant, 
he'll be pretty healthy pretty soon. Yeah, definitely looking to be that way, but we need to look at these infusions as well. They are starting to burn out for a couple players. Falcon Dorians is burning out, and right now, Ace have shop control if they stick to where they're at. And that can be a huge advantage leading into the next fight. He's uh, trying to step forward. Ace give up the control. Falcon Dorian still waiting in the bush. Doesn't go down yet. He's still about 10 gold away from it. Now he's got enough. Kraken started. Falcon Dorian, you're going to get another infusion are you gonna wait for just a moment ace gaming smell blood they smell an advantage they smell an opportunity to jump in because the kraken is going lower down to about half hp pain gaming and ace the game rests on this moment you feel there perhaps could be a comeback if you lose the kraken but not if you lose the fight kraken down it's a quarter away from being captured and we can see just we know Ferrer willing to step forward into the faces of ace but ace once again disengage and the Kraken resets. Continues to be aggroed there by Muster. Pain realizing perhaps they have the advantage now. No infusion still. No infusion on Muster as well. That's huge because Tassa has one, as does Creation. The Kraken going lower. The Tref buff blocked out. The Sun coming out. The Kraken goes down and Pain gaming. Get it. They're looking for a little bit more of a fight as well. But Ace just back away. Great stuff from Pain. One shot, one kill connects, but Falcon Dorian healthy enough to survive through that. Now it's up to Ace. Can they shred through the Kraken before they get towards these turrets? You don't feel like Pain wins off this, but you feel they get mighty close, especially if they can find a fight. But the damage comes out from Ace and they take down one. There's the death from above as well. Cruz chasing down towards the bottom side, but Musta has no one to keep him left alive. And now Ace continues to push forward. They're gonna get an Ace for their own. They're gonna get three kills. And thankfully for Pain Gaming, they got the Kraken just a moment ago, so this should not be the win for Ace Gaming. No, it shouldn't be, but one shot, one kill coming through out of Tassa there. Just trying to help. Let's get into this replay because this was really a little bit of overextension from Mustard. Look how far forward he was. It gave them the opportunity, and Jezuino Farah had to go up a little bit too far. They turned their attention onto the Churnwalker very quickly, and then it was only a matter of time before this 3v2 went south for Pain Gaming. And Creation going to go ahead and take down that turret, and they're going to even stop the Kraken before the Choke Point turret is destroyed or even really damaged. Yeah, it's monumental for Ace Gaming being able to hold onto that, and you can see they get about a 3,000 gold lead from it. But at this point, how much does that really matter? Only Falcon Dorian's waiting to pick up a few more items, just we know further there as well, but the carries are fully built. Tassa has a shatter glass, a clockwork, and a broken myth. If he can find a catch, if he can find those glimmers, thread them through onto Muster, he will absolutely melt through that Celeste. Jusuino Ferro with the Echo here as well. Perhaps looking for the double trespass or the double torment because you lose those hooks and chains after you use that ultimate ability. Yeah, another one shot, one kill landing on the Sir Muster, taking him down about a third of his health and uh, no Treant to take this time. So they're gonna take the opportunity to just recall, top up some health. There's a metal jacket now complete for Sir Muster, but he doesn't have any shielding to prevent the damage that Tassa has been able to put down on him in every single one of these fights. So it's, it's a clear window that Ace need to uh, use to their advantage. If we can get this Kestrel onto the Celeste, we can blow her to pieces. There's no real defense here. And there's a pretty sizable amount of crystal power built here. We have the Broken Myth Clockwork and Shatter Glass ready to go, as well as Creation sitting on four offensive items on this weapon sky, a level 12 infusion, all of Ace Gaming infused, and only Sir Muster for the side of Pain Gaming have one. So they have to be cautious as they approach this next fight. The last time we saw a really good fight for Pain Gaming was when they had that vision control, when they had those scout traps, and they were able to catch Tassa out early on in the fray because he went into the active camo and then was spotted by a scout trap. They don't have as much vision at the moment. You can see just we know Ferrer is trying to get some scout traps down, but as soon as he puts them further up in the field, they get cleared out. And now with the Kraken spawning, it's Ace Gaming who have control of the middle of this jungle. Yeah, they do. Kraken's back on the board 22 minutes into this game. Could be anyone's to take, depending on this next fight. The death timers are getting incredibly long. Creation's been spotted out. They spot him out, jumps away with the Suri Strike, and Ace just disengage. Ace have been so patient, so willing to wait. It's what we see so often from these East Asian teams waiting for the prime time to strike waiting for the opportune moment and pain gaming haven't given them too many moments at all 
Is this it? Is this the game defining play? Three turrets left for both teams. Basically no gold in it. Just Wino Ferre is in that front line. Another infusion picked up on some muster, but nothing on Falcon Dorian yet. Has the Atlas, has the Shiver Steel, has the Aegis, but no infusion. How impactful will that be? Or does he just need to distract and dissuade Ace from taking the engage? Damage from the Helios, but the Sigil heals them up once again. Kraken takes a little bit of DPS, but it's more scratches on her back than anything else. Painter playing around Vision here, looking to see if there's an avenue of victory, a way in. One shot, one kill, doesn't connect. Is that their chance here? Go in, Falcon Dorian gets onto the back line. There's the core collapse, the Solar Storm as well, and the stun. The core collapse, the CC Chamber creation manages to dodge out with the reflex block. And now it's Pain in a 3v2. They're chasing onto Ace. Can they take down their Korean counterpart? Master just about survives, but the core collapse doesn't quite connect. And now we need to see Pain back away because otherwise Ace are gonna collapse from two sides. One shot, one kill onto Falcon Dorian isn't enough to take him down. Let's have a look at Fountains. They're both used no healing left for these teams have to get through that eve through the healer tree end but ace aren't willing to give up the chase they're pushing forward even towards the crystal sentry once again they decide to back away the solar storm is not enough to take them out but youngju is low on energy that's a full creation once again hiding in this bush he wants that flank he wants the way in and he can't quite find it yet no, that was a crazy fight that broke out there. The Solar Storm did a good job coming through at the end. You know, it did hit uh, Tassa. Wasn't quite enough, but the fight really broke out well when Falcon Dorian, you know, took that opportunity, got the From Hell's Heart, was able to stun up that Kestrel. They weren't able to close things out. In fact, they almost dropped Creation. They turned their attention very well onto him. And now we're just kind of back at that stalemate feel that this game has been for a little bit. We have infusions across the board, but Pain Gaming has just renewed oh, theirs. this is so sneaky. Are they going to get this, Denominate? Are they going to sneak it away from Ace Gaming? Ace had realized now when they go in, Anchor Cam has been used, the Kraken is low, there's the one shot, one kill, and the Kraken is down! Pain, get it! Last time we saw a fight, the, 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 from Hell's Heart does connect onto creation, he gets the reflex block in the end, but Pain Gaming can just back away, they've got the Kraken, they can win a fight underneath the turret, they've got their second Kraken of the game, and 25 minutes in, Pain Gaming are looking to start to secure this. They need at least that choke turret, they really need a lot more, they need to take down that crystal, because they want their spot in the semi-finals. Yeah, what's a little bit unfortunate is they did take damage when the Kraken was taken, so they lost that health buff. And meanwhile, Young ju has been able to just use that Imperial Sigil, top the team off. So Ace are in a much healthier position. Pain have to play this perfectly. They need to find a kill on the creation here. Solar, Solar Storm. Storm onto the turret, doesn't quite connect for the damage. Looking for those Helios on the turret as well. The Kraken is low, the stun's gonna land onto creation, but he is healed back up. Death from above onto the Kraken. Will they crack the choke point turret they will that's big for pain that is a key turning point in this game unable to get the kills but they break into the base of ace gaming yeah and you know we are now past the 25 minute mark and the death timers essentially maxed out at this point so in the next fight you know despite pain gaming taking down that choke point if a team is able to get a clean ace either one of them should really be able to end it off of a single push and it's it, both of these teams again. They, this is game five. This is this is everything. You lose this one, and you are you're done for Worlds 2017. So, you know, both of these teams want to move on. Both of these teams want that shot at the championship. You know, the uh, the next I guess favorite crowd favorite would be Cloud Nine and uh, Tribe right up there. Pretty sure the crowd favorite is in impunity at the yeah. moment. Don't know when I. Wow. Yeah. That's where. Yes. I I, I, I can agree with you there. So. Uh, yeah, but it's so, so vital for Ace Gaming to continue that legacy of EA being an incredible region here at Worlds. No matter what happens, all the players that came today have played absolutely amazing, uh, you know, all weekend. Death of Mobile does come down, it's off towards the side, and Pain Gaming retreat down towards the jungle. 4,000 gold lead here for Ace Gaming, but that really doesn't matter too much at the moment. Creation's gonna get pulled in, that doesn't quite get the supernova. Muster gets the shot blocked from Falcon. And Ace are still pretty healthy here, Muster needs to back away. It's been incredible to see how well every single one of the players in this game have performed. It's been no mistakes, just pure outplay after outplay to get these kills and good shot calling from both teams as well. We are coming in to what has to be the final minutes of this game because we've got nowhere else to go. The next fight 
will likely win it for someone. Muster still in base, coming out now. Ace had an opportunity. The Dragon's Eye has been completed on Muster as well. Keeping the house in charges, he has sh sold that Shatter Glass. He thinks he gets more damage out of the Dragon's Eye if he can get the stacks up. Here comes the flank by Bulwark. Stun, only gonna land onto Yongju. The Death from above will get the stun onto Jusuino Ferrer. Looking for the Trespass, the stuns are gonna land. And now Ace Gaming perhaps on the back foot, but Yongju uses a great sigil. The stealth comes out, Falcon Dorian realizes he needs to get the hell out of there, because otherwise he'll get stunned up. A great second stun, but the damage from the active camo. Master, Solar Storm doesn't quite connect, and now it's up to Tassa to get these flanks off. One shot, one kill, not gonna hit, but Jusuino Ferrer will still fall. A ridiculous kill by a ridiculous player creation is shredding through pain and Ace Gaming have found a fight that they needed. They're gonna take them all down and are they gonna take the win off that? It's definitely gonna be a little bit close as these turrets get taken down. It will reduce the death timers, but 45, 50, it's looking like Ace Gaming should have what they need to close this one out. And I think, uh, I think we have EA advancing on in this tournament. What a performance by Ace Gaming, taking it all the way to the best of five. They'll take down the Crystal Turrets, they'll take down the Crystal, and they'll take down Pain Gaming as they go through to the semi-finals. It's, it's been a crazy journey, almost a little bit speechless at the end of that game. Pain Gaming took it so close to the end, took Ace all the way to basically 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, they've performed great. They've really stepped things up since last year. It was great to have them with us. And I, I'm going to just be honest, I'm excited to see Ace as they move on in this tournament. And. That's it's great to see. Like, Pain Gaming put a, a superb performance on. It was exemplary. They almost took down Ace, but Ace adapted. They improvised. They changed their strategy. They were able to wait out the games, and they did such a good job in closing out that game. They picked the opportune moment at times that it looked like it was going in Pain's favor, but Ace, after two Krakens going down, were able eventually to get a Kraken of their own. Uh, they didn't even need a Kraken. No, they, they, just, they just took they down just, the they just went for Who it. needs Kraken to win games, not Ace Gaming? Well, what 30 minutes, it yeah. gets a little bit easier. Right? <laughs> it does, it does. So. What a performance, though, from both the teams. And you have to give Payne so much credit coming into it. Oh, absolutely. I think they impressed a lot of people this time around. They should be incredibly proud of themselves for just how well they did. You know, again, that's one of the ones that really ruined a lot of those brackets we were talking about. A lot of people had Payne Gaming going out very early on. That wasn't the case. They turned things really, really into high gear. They took Ace all the way to game five and almost took the series victory. And that's a huge statement from a team that, you know, last year 